Okay. Uh, that seems all right. That seems all right. And that's all right there. Well, hello there. Welcome. This is a little bit of a different kind of stream uh, for those who don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, so a little idea that a few of us have had is to essentially do a uh, a live a live chat basically between a few of us and um, we just literally talk about anything that we want it could be Star Trek it could be it could, it, you know our conversations have usually gone sort of everywhere haven't they really <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so um, yeah uh, so tonight we have um, obviously myself because well it's just me um we've got one of, we've got a few of my subs as well we might have another one coming in later depending on how he feels um and we have zell a long Hello. time a long time viewer of the channel and a multi, multiple commenter <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome uh, welcome to the, the 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 welcome to 10 forward i suppose hello internet welcome to game no that's the wrong channel <laughs> um, Hello, Internet. I am Zell. I am a fleet leader for the 106th fleet in Star Trek Online, a ship poster, and general nice guy. Excellent. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, swearing in the first half hour on the stream is right part of the course for demonetization. So that's brilliant. Well, we already <laughs> agreed it was going to happen one way or the other. Yeah, well, it was either going to be me or it was going to be you. Uh, and, yeah, and there exactly. you go. Uh, we also have uh, <laughs> the games librarian. How are you? I'm good. I'm sipping my Saurian brandy. Your Saurian brandy. Well, I've got my uh, Rack T Gino. It's it's uh, in this cleverly concealed uh, black thermos. So uh, we're all set to go sort of go. And this is just us having a chat as usual. So just pretend the um pretend the internet's not there uh but, but pretend youtube are sort of watching in their infinite wisdom mama susan don't punish us <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah what, what were you guys talking about before i had all my technical issues before the stream uh, i was just uh giving games library an update on what's changed in star trek online since he last played uh, stuff like story arcs and where they've updated stuff and what have you. Generally, what we were talking about. Mm. Yeah. A lot of it was like storyline stuff and the fact that they've done some really good stuff in the storyline. Yeah. Um, especially the early arcs, which lead up to like the Iconian War. Really well written stuff. So, because I'm currently playing Star Trek Online at the moment, I'm just chilling at Deep Space Nine currently. You know, doing my thing. I'll probably go and kill a load of aliens at some point. It's what I do. It's what they do. Aliens, <laughs> aliens drop loot. <laughs> yes, I, I, I help them to identify as fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of extra bonus pyrotechnics for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the Borg hear boss music when I turn up. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing uh, a meme a few days ago. It was like, um, you know, uh, we're the Borg. Resistance is futile. We will adapt your. Hang on a minute. Is that Cisco? Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Cisco dealt with trauma by designing a warship to take out the Borg. I mean, that props to him, man. Yeah. Yes. None of this crying in the corner over his wife. He's like, no, I'm going to get him. This is a man who nuked a planet to get one man. Well, that's <laughs> very true. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> it's Eddington, it. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, especially the fact that Worf hesitates. Yeah, Worf, the Klingon, the Klingon warrior. You know, the, the yeah. <laughs> just just says, "Hang on a minute, you got a bit far there." <laughs> like where the Klingons concerned, you're going too far. Yeah. <laughs> so, so hang on a minute, you you, you want to do what? <clears throat> I always I always thought because because of. You know, Worf's um, moral compass. I say moral in in terms of uh, the the Klingon uh, moral code. Yeah. 
Um, I, I would assume that that would be somewhat cowardly, you know, poisoning in a planet. I think he says in one episode as well, I forget what it was, but he says poisoning an entire planet from, from orbit, there's just no honour in it. <laughs> so maybe that's where it was coming from. But I, I prefer to think of it as this guy's fucking mental. Uh, I, I just said it's just funny, considering the Klingons went on a crusade to eradicate tribbles. Yeah. And there's no songs of glory about that, so the yeah. they swept that under the carpet, you know. Yeah, the, the songs of the great tribble hunt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just these 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 kind of um parasitic uh furry, oh, cute little balls of <laughs> hair that purr <laughs> when you stroke them and, and and bark in a chipmunk style when you sit on them. Oh, dear. And and the the mortal enemy of the Klingon Empire. <laughs> the mortal enemy of the Klingon Empire. They don't like anything cute. That's no, it. they don't. They it's, don't. There is no word in Klingon for cute. But again, it it just speaks to the guys doing writing these shows and and creating these fantastic series. Uh, they they know this. They they is part of the 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 character makeup because you know you get data asking Worf to look after the cat. <laughs> he just holds it up like that, doesn't he? It's like I yeah. will feed your cat. <laughs> and then he sneezes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying to you the other night about the fact we were really spoiled back then with mm. the quality of writing. And it was that level of quality. I mean, my favourite Star Trek writer is Ronald D. Moore, for example. Yeah. You know, I think he's written some of the best episodes of TNG and Deep Space Nine. I know he worked on Voyager a little bit, but he really wasn't on Voyager that much. He'd be brought on for a little while and then left. But, it, you know, but then you've, you've got like a lot of the other, especially some like the TOS era ones as well, who are well ahead of their time. Mm. You know, and it's, it's kind of sad to sort of see what Star Trek's become now. Well, the, the yeah, the um, the skill has just vanished. It's, yeah, it it's all, sort of like um, the the skill pool has been so badly diluted that there's just nothing there's nothing strong about it. It's just so weak. Yeah, I mean, I think the episode I pointed out to you as one of my first was duet. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I ha I practically had a mangasm when you said that that that, that it, episode exactly. title. You, yeah, exactly. Because it's it's just basically this wonderful two man show. Yeah, of Norris and this Cardassian, and it's absolutely wonderful, oh. absolutely spellbinding. Like how that how that didn't get more awards, I don't know because it's so beautifully done. Yeah, and you just don't get that now. No, no, you don't. And uh, you know, I, I, I as I said back then, hats off to Harris Eulin for pulling that off because, you know, he's another one of the greats. Um, and I will I will say, if you do leave any chat messages, uh, guys who are watching, uh, I am reading them as I go along. Uh, hello, just another watch nerd. But obviously, conversation will will we'll deal with the yeah, chat. I'm keeping a little bit YouTube later. off because I can't deal with that level of inception. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of like when you uh, select a screen capture of your screen capture and it just goes on infinitely. How do we know which stream is real? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But on what you were what you were just saying, um, Zell, about I, I came across an article, and this article, it, you know, it was posted in one of those fucking those, those horrible Facebook groups that where people just salivate over new trek what where, where i'm banned <laughs> yeah yeah those places you can't go because you, you're, you're too extreme um and it, it, it's a it's an interview with alex kurtzman and michelle paradise on discovery's final season and and i was reading it and i was just thinking who the hell are these people really where where's where, it, it, in some ways where's daddy gone <laughs> so 
some of the questions i mean okay so get this what what can you tell us about the themes of discovery's final season michelle paradise says thematically we explore very big things where we come from things like that <laughs> uh, okay uh, care to elaborate anything else on that um oh, any given season, we look to see how those things play out with each character and their particular arcs. I do think that at the end of the day, it will feel very satisfying. <laughs> um, I'm trying to keep a straight face while reading this. Uh, we did get a chance to shoot some additional material to wrap up the series itself. Uh, they're, they're called reshoots. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's additional things, um, but I think people will feel really good about how it's wrapping up and that it tells a complete series story for each of our beloved characters. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, could you talk about how other properties like Star Wars or Indiana Jones may have influenced season five. <laughs> Two of the worst examples. Oh dear God. <laughs> of the modern era is modern Star Wars and Indiana Jones. How did they inspire you? Okay. So Alex Kurtzman says to that. <laughs> we definitely knew that we wanted to do a quest season. And probably the greatest quests committed to film are the Indiana Jones movies. So I think there was some sort of influence there. I don't know that Star Wars ever came up. <laughs> um, that wasn't part of it. But we definitely wanted the idea of a quest and putting pieces of a puzzle towards a giant reveal. Isn't that just the the structure of... I was going to say, that's just mystery box bullshit. It is mystery box <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Michelle Paradise says, internally we talked about it as, uh, as an Indiana Jones type season. Uh, because series of film... Uh, because series... Uh, this is how shit writing is. Uh, because series of films is known for its adventure... Those films make us think of archaeological expeditions and sand. It's coarse. It gets everywhere. <laughs> and, and, and ruins. It makes us think of ruins and all that. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Um, that, that led to an idea of a city in the desert that we started to play with. Oh, sorry. Uh, is that play with or plagiarise? Oh dear God! Uh, I we think just... they just put a lot of the plot points into Chat GPT and see what it spat out. Hell, I mean that's what I do with my channel. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jesus! Uh, we wanted to have fun with that and explore a shifted tonal direction from previous seasons, while of course maintaining all the things that make up Discovery's identity. What fucking identity? Oh <laughs> fucking <hell. coughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Um, Are these uh, people even real? Like, oh, you know, oh, it gets right? better. It gets oh. better. Um, what's it been like to see Discovery and the Star Trek universe as a whole grow? Brace yourselves. <clears throat> like a tumour. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Kurtzman, when we started Discovery, we weren't actually setting out to build a universe. We were just setting out to make a new Star Trek show. I think that in tackling al along the different, uh, attacking along the different roads Discovery gave us, the fact that we were able to bring Pike and Spock and Number One into the show, Akiva Gorsman said, that's the there's a great Star Trek show with Pike in the lead and the entire era aboard the Enterprise before before Kirk takes over. Welcome to just, just, just a minute, I'll, I'll get back to this. Uh, welcome, Reva. how are you? Pretty good, how are you guys doing? 
No, oh, we're having a laugh. I'm just reading an we're, interview. We're having a laugh, uh, but we're also crying on the inside. Yeah, yeah, we're dying a little bit on the inside. Uh, Reaver of Joel Sandwiches, welcome to the stream. Um, it is the, uh, the the terrible quartet that's uh, streaming tonight. Okay, so <clears throat> allow me to allow me to. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're more it, like the four horsemen. <laughs> <laughs> if did that song. If if. Uh, if half of the um, comments that I've gotten in my videos in the past are, are, say anything about me, I've, I've got to be pestilent. <laughs> um, so, just continuing, I said, Kurtzman, uh, why don't we cast a good pike first and see how that works, and we'll go from there. So they didn't even have a plan. Uh, that obviously ended up becoming Strange New Worlds. Uh, but that could never have happened without Season 2 of Discovery. Never. I believe strongly that every Star Trek show needs to have its very uh, own very unique identity. I don't, want, uh, I don't want you to think that you can watch one show and get your fill of Star Trek. And therefore, don't have to watch any others. It's funny that, isn't it? Because they're always telling us, oh, your Star Trek's gone. Um, yep. Each one of us has uh, has to have each one has to have its own identity. But the key is that not uh, that me, uh, the key it to that is not making one show that's supposed to please everybody. That fucking chestnut. <laughs> if you tr this is this is the kicker. If you try to make one show to please everybody, ultimately you're going to please nobody. So. Each of these shows are really designed and targeted to access a very specific part of the fandom. And there's a real misnomer about Trek fandom. It's not a generic term that you can apply to everybody. Nice. There are... He's not finished yet. Uh, there oh, are God. so many different subsets of, Star, uh, of Trek fans. And we're doing this <sighs> rainbow <clears throat> of shows oh to appeal to each subset without necessarily having to get everybody in the door. I say I call bullshit on that. Discover yep. Discovery led the way in so many ways. It really pointed us like a compass to what was possible, and that An had iceberg. A... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong Shit, about that. Mountain. Oh my god! Uh, now yeah, we're on this wild. Ad sorry, mate. Now we're on this wild adventure. We're in the middle of shooting section thirty-one, and we're halfway through the writing of the first season of Starfleet Academy. Um, and we start shooting that at the end of the summer, and there's more up behind that. It's been pretty amazing. Fuck you. Yeah. Yep. Are, are these yeah. people even human? Like, I'm not enjoying I want to ask, I'd love to ask Alex Kurtzman, you see a turtle lying on its shell, what do you do? Because I've got to feel my answer will be, screw you, replicant. <laughs> <laughs> Get me Decker. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, Decker, like, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Sorry, well, the thing is, references there. Sorry, but I can understand wanting different identities in different shows, but they have to be good. Th well, this is it. I like don't wrong. TNG obviously had a different identity to TOS. You know, Deep Space right. Nine had a different. I, I can understand coming from that angle, mm. but sure. I don't really feel like the shows have an identity. Nope. It's, it feels like they're just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Especially season two of Picard and Strange New Worlds. I don't know what they were thinking with those two seasons. Exactly. I, I, I don't get it. Um, it's really, I don't know. I mean, Discovery, every season they're revamping it. And then they decide to rip off Andromeda and fling the ship into the far future. <laughs> and, you know, it, it honestly, there's no <coughs> plan. It doesn't feel like there's, uh, there's actually a plan there to build anything it's all haphazard isn't it yeah I mean, and like tng you could see there was a plan it may not have been an overarching plan like d space nine but there was a plan 
with the show. There, there, there's growth. There's, you know, you got season one and two, which are obviously a bit shaky, but they were coming out of, you know, they were recycling episode ideas from phase two. You know, so you got writers born in the 30s writing episodes for a show in the 70s that didn't get made till the 80s. Yeah. You know, but then season three onwards, you know, they found their footing and the plan carried on. You know, yeah. there was growth. Deep Space Nine, you know, they had a plan. Voyager had a plan. With with this modern Trek, especially Discovery more so, it, it definitely doesn't feel like there's a plan there. They're just throwing everything they can and just seeing what sticks. And unfortunately, what sticks is a load of shite. <laughs> well, that's very true. <laughs> but also, they, they're saying that... Um, they're, they're right about, the, about Trek having uh, subsets of fans. Um, mm. But only in... Only in Everybody can agree that Star Trek is pretty decent, and right. and and classic era of Star Trek, and we're talking about the golden age of Star Trek, was pretty much brilliant. So mm. we can all agree on that. And yes, you've yes. got people. Um, a friend of mine says he he hasn't watched anything really past the Next Generation because he really likes the Next Generation, and that's fine. Mm. That's absolutely fine, but we can all agree that the next generation is great. Yeah. Whereas, whereas <laughs> older Star Trek fans, uh, fans of anything pre two thousand and five, don't generally like New Trek, and I'm I'm generalising here because there are individuals that do, but the vast majority don't. Yeah. So, the. <laughs> Yeah, he's right. He's also right when he says they're they're appealing to a very specific subset of fans, and I think we all know what that means. Well, <laughs> that entire yeah. Lord, I watched the show. <laughs> that, that entire yeah. sort of like bit of dialogue from Kurtzman just sounds like to me he's just literally drawn a dividing line. Yeah, he's deliberately drawn a line in the sand, and gone. This is who we want. We don't want you. So we're going to appeal to this, these people over here. We don't want you. Instead of saying, let's appeal to the old fans while at the same time simultaneously trying to bring in new people. Yeah. Because you've then, got a core audience. You don't need to necessarily bring in new fans. Jesus Christ, Star Trek fans saved Star Trek when it was cancelled. Mm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, the reasons you... going. Exactly. And when you've got a business and you're running a business and... You have, um, you have, I don't know, 10 different customers, one of which accounts for 70 to 80 percent of your total revenue. You don't then go and shit all over them to appeal to someone who gives you 5 percent. That's that's recipe for a, a doomed business model. Yeah. And Star Trek, whether whether you call it art or whether you, you know, you call it um you know, it doesn't matter if you call it the saviour of everything. Star Trek saved my life. It doesn't matter. It's a business. And if it, ultimately Star Trek doesn't get made without money, without making money. So why would you shit on the people who are giving you the most money? Because you care more about the message than the money. Exactly. Yep. And Kurtzman's already said that. He already said, I... I'm using Star. I don't care about Star Trek. I'm using it as a platform to put my message out. And the sad thing is, well, you got something like the Orville, which shows that you can take classic Star Trek and move it into modern age and have it appeal to everybody. Yeah. Oh God, you can shut your eyes, right, during an episode of the Orville, and just imagine them on the bridge of a Galaxy class, and it works. Yes. The dialogue Absolutely. fits. Because it's it's the it's the style. Uh, a lot of the Orville is the, it, it, if you think about uh, visual style, okay, not the most important story structure. The way they tell an episode, the way the the way the uh, the characters behave. Everyone's a grown up, but everyone's allowed their own individuality. I don't think, I don't think even Claire's kid are necessarily kids they're actually quite mature for what they are um for the age they're more they mature are. than anybody on Star uh, discovery exactly yeah. and that's the point that's that, that's my point every character on the orville is a grown-up now grown-ups can behave immaturely 
um, as, as and remain mature adults as long as they go through some sort of self reflection to say, you know what, I was being a dick. Yeah. And that's what Mercer does. Very comically in, in, in several sort of different situations. I mean, that the, the, when he was trying to spy on Grayson and Cassius, <laughs> I mean, just floating out the back of the window, I thought that was just freaking genius because, yeah, we're, 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 we're mature, but we're all susceptible to these childish sort of traits. But those traits don't define us. And with Discovery and, you know, New Trek in general, those traits are at the forefront. And can it's a miracle when they're that, mature. Can we also appreciate the fact that the film <laughs> managed to make the audience give a crap about a love story between a robot and a woman? Exactly. Like it, it, that was, it, it, it's so well written and so well done that you end up you end up just rooting for it, like but, getting actually excited for it. But you, was anyone here worried when that started to happen? Simply because of what we had with New Trek. I was actually genuinely concerned. I thought, oh God, they're gonna, they're gonna take that. How the I hell wasn't. are they gonna do that? I wasn't, I'll be honest with you. I was just curious how they were gonna pull it off. Yeah. That's, that's a difficult, that's a difficult kind of story arc to kind of do mm. and do well. And they kind of sowed some of the seeds for that in season one when uh, Isaac was on that planet with the kids. Yeah. It reminded me of that data episode. Do you remember when he gets an uh, gets a girlfriend? Yes. Uh, in theory. Yeah. Yeah. It was very much gave me that sort of vibes. You know, and that's yeah. again testament to the Orville because again you talk about the story. It's not just the story as well. It's the characters. It's the characters that you get to know. Yeah. And how well they're written. How well they're acted. Uh, in season three, there's that, that was, they introduced that new character, didn't they? The the blonde character. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, she has such a great character arc. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, uh, upon meeting her, um, I thought she was going to be a Mary Sue character. So did I. But she yeah. absolutely wasn't. because, And I love the fact that Mercer put her in her place several times. Yeah saying, you, you've gone too far, leave the bridge. You're not going to follow my orders, leave the bridge. Now, in stark contrast to a show like Discovery, the captain will go, you know what, actually, you've got, you've got a fair point. I shouldn't be talking to you like that. Burnham starts a war and she gets praised. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and eventually promoted. <laughs> and promoted. It's like, just God. Reinstated, promoted. <laughs> you've consigned millions to death. Have a promotion. Yeah. Yeah. A reward for genocide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what, what kind of moral message is that? And I, I, what I love about the Orville, and and did, is it was it me or did the Orville cause a little bit of not a divide but a divided opinion? Because some people said, well, it's not Star Trek and it's too silly, it's too goofy, but they didn't give it a chance because it evolved. One, definitely the most goofy season yeah but then season two onwards it just started going more down i think they just picked a direction yeah In season one it didn't feel like they were they were trying to be a comedy and a sci-fi and they were struggling to find the balance in season one yeah and it, I think it, season two they just picked a lane yeah and said this is what we're gonna do we're gonna have the lighter moments still but so did star trek yeah. Yeah. but we're gonna go down the more serious sci-fi route a little bit and I think that was a realization for Seth MacFarlane because he, he you know, he's he's done a lot of comedies, um, and he said, "I want to make a Star Trek show," and it, but with a Seth MacFarlane twist. But what it actually became um, was almost a, a serious Star Trek show with the with the twenty five percent MacFarlane. Yeah. Yeah, and it worked immensely. So. Immensely, so. and and you know the Orville, the Orville will always, um, it will always stay in here because it was uh, it, it gave my dad some real sort of humour before he died. He he loved the Orville, um, and he wasn't around for season three, unfortunately. But the first, I, I I lent him the season season one, and he went out and bought 
season one and two after I lent him. And he says, Richard, it, it was absolutely phenomenal what you'd done uh, introducing me to this show. And he loved it. And he, he said, I've never laughed so hard in my life. And then some of the serious episodes come in. And he says, this feels like Star Trek again. Because prior to that, I told him about Picard season one. <laughs> and you can imagine the look on his face was just sheer horror. And I said, yeah, they, they, okay, so what they did in season one, Dad, was they, they made Picard sort of slight, ever so slightly gay. What? <laughs> yeah, and they said he was in love with Data. Huh? And I said, yeah, and they, they made him a, a fumbling, bumbling old man. And he became sort of this um, joke to Starfleet, who, it, which is now run entirely by uh, women. And he goes, you are full of, you're full of shit. You're, you, you, you're having a laugh. I said, no, I'm serious. That's what it is. Wait so, till you see each <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, just put your thoughts in in the chat for each ep, because uh, Jesus Christ, each ep. <laughs> what a joke! Season one can just be summed up as old white man does apology tour for shit that's not his fault. Yeah. Yep. That's basically it, and then and, there's some weird stuff with flowers at the end. And it's <laughs> oh god, that yeah, you've just reminded me about the space orcas. Thanks a lot for that, mate. <laughs> And what you're on the stream and you remind me about the fucking space orchids. What the hell? I'm lucky enough to not have seen... Uh, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, I'm lucky enough to not have seen the second half of season one of that show. Oh, Jesus Christ. Space orchids, mate. Space orchids. Uh, It's like that Simpsons sketch of the hippies fighting the American army with flowers, isn't it? It's like that. It's... It's more the it's more the fact that um, when, when when Picard succumbs to the uh, you know the irremodic syndrome, uh, he does so just after the fight. <laughs> so he he just makes it this this um, bumbling, feeble, de- degrading, decaying old man manages to survive till just after everything is fine, and then he unceremoniously just passes away like a fart in the wind yes oh dear god and then they give what <clears throat> can somebody explain why they gave him a robot body that was still frail and old and bumbling yeah right. uh, because uh patrick stewart <laughs> yeah they, they could have given him like a, a, a decent body where like he's a little bit more vibrant you know well i mean okay in in, in hindsight <laughs> the ca- the actor that played jack yeah, could have played Robo Picard. Robo Picard. But then well, we would have had that wonderful scene in season two where he gets hit by a car. <laughs> that was the two lights. <laughs> <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> just <laughs> fucking season nuts. Two, season two was they just dropped a lot of acid, didn't they, in the writers' room? Oh yeah. I I don't think it was acid. It had to be something stronger than that. Oh, Maybe they just put everything in a pot, ground it up, and just started making lines. You know. Yeah. yeah it's... Every, let's throw in some ecstasy. We'll throw in some mushrooms. We'll throw in a little bit of LSD. I'll be fine, lads. We're going to write the best season ever. Patrick Stewart just sitting there going, You know what? I, <laughs> I think we need to go back in time. Well, why Mommy's do you think earning in the corner? <laughs> so why do you think that, Patrick? Oh well, um, I. Well, <laughs> my, did, did you know my my mother? Um, uh, she she hung herself, and 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 everybody everybody wants to know that. So, uh, um, <laughs> uh, what, what was I what was I talking about? Oh, back in time, yes, and. I remember seeing yesterday on 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 on, on the television um, a, a marvelous film. I can't remember the name of it, but it it 
they, they went back in time by flying around the sun, and then they, they got whales. <laughs> I think we should follow on from that and do the same thing. <laughs> and then daddy issues. Don't forget the daddy issues. <laughs> I yeah, yes, the, the the very speedily uh, resolved daddy issues of, I don't know, what, 50 years uh, to be resolved well, in five seconds. Yep. Well, he is old and he's running out of time, so... <laughs> so I can't yeah, stay mad at you. Yes, I can't <laughs> stay mad at you, you little scamp. <laughs> you know, he, he goes from the line, you were relentless, to... Oh, perhaps I judged you too harshly. What oh, the? That'll... Why? How oh, did that? The dementia setting in. <laughs> I've forgotten everything you did. Yeah, are, are we quoting Picard or the State of the Union address? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, who uh, knows? Who I, knows I, at this point? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Season two, season two. What a fantastic season! That, that was that was definitely. It was the. I remember bashing my head on a wall when I heard that the Borg Queen assimilated people because she was lonely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bashing my head on the wall, just like, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> it's all about all feelings. Now. That was terrifying. I have <laughs> assimilated millions. I've mass genocide because I'm lonely. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reason the Borg created. Go on Tinder like everyone else. Christ's sake. Jesus. It was, um, I mean, one of the the things that made me laugh hardest in my reviews of season two was um, the dash across the vineyard by Seven and Ruffy. Oh, God. And it's like, about this one. it's like you, you they, they, they shoot, there's something like 12 soldiers in, in the vineyard, all kind of closely, tightly packed within shot. And Seven and Rafi are running towards them. And suddenly the Borg turn into the equivalent of stormtroopers and can't hit shit. <laughs> oh. What? And, and I, I just thought... They did assimilate Frenchmen. They're not renowned for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I You're teetering. You are render. teetering, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Run away! Run, Run away! away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and it's like um, the, that 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 scene was particularly hilarious because they clearly didn't have the motivation, time, energy, or money to film it because the next time you see Seven and Ruffy, they're on the ship. <laughs> Just a, they, they, they made it. They're fine. No bullet holes. No scratches. No 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 roughness. It's like they've just stepped out the salon. Straight. I really hate Rios's ending in that season. Yeah. yeah. Rios is a good character, and I like that first episode of season two is brilliant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we and agreed like on that. Rios in command of the Stargazer. Yeah. yeah. I even appreciated him smoking a cigar on the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, I like that. I and was very forgiving. Like, they made him the joke of the season, and then they gave him a pathetic ending. Which yeah, that they... that pathetic ending uh, was <laughs> was brilliant in 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 the fact that um, a few moments before he got that pathetic ending, he was the one saying, "We've got to gather all the technology because we don't want the butterfly effect." Uh, yeah. And then five five minutes later, he's like, "I'm going to stay behind." <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's no way anybody in the right minds would have let him stay behind. No. So Jesus like, no, bro, Christ. you gotta come back. You you could you could alter the future. And again, pointing back to the Orville, one of my ultimate favorite episodes from season three, and there were a few. There were I was a few just thinking really about good. this one the other day. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I know. The, the Gordon episode. Yeah. I replayed that that scene with him in his uh, kids' nursery, isn't it? And yeah. I replayed that scene three times when I watched it because I went and, and this is why I opened my review with fucking hell because mm. that scene was exceptionally well written, exceptionally well acted, and just conveyed the the 
the gravitas of what was actually going on. An actual genuine emotion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. very, very maturely written, very, very maturely portrayed. And um, it was it was absolutely heart wrenching. And you could tell all the characters felt the weight of what was what they were suggesting they did when they went back to his house. And the, when his realization of what that means for him and his reaction, he had nothing left. He, 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 he knew he couldn't kill them. He knew he couldn't uh, do anything. And it was just, I'm going to have to say goodbye to my family because they'll never have existed. New Trek, I can't see doing that. No. And if they do, someone's going to have to follow half the crew with a mop to get the tears up. Well, we just saw, we just talked about how they handled a situation like that with Rios. Yeah. They decided to just leave him in the past. Yeah. Completely all... against everything. That's against the temporal prime directive. <laughs> Even Kirk wasn't that sloppy. Do you remember there was that TOS episode where that, that woman he falls in love with, but then he realizes he has to let her die. That is city, yep. city on the edge of forever. Yeah. See, I don't know yeah. the original series, but I know that one. <laughs> yeah, but that is that's a good example again, and that was in the freaking sixties. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Although, it it probably did cause the extinction of the humpback whales by taking Gillian to the future as one of the men proponents in stopping whale hunting it's a self-fulfilling loop <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah, I, he did do that what i like about that is that can be explained away it says they've got they've got to conserve power so there's no point in beaming her, her back on off the ship she's yeah. sort of stuck there now <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine <laughs> oh god i'm thinking but, of that bashir quote uh, in uh, that uh, PS9 episode we were talking about yesterday where they go back to TOS and he talks about, it could be, I don't remember if he called it a self-fulfilling prophecy where he was yeah. thinking, I could be destined to go back in time, meet her and become my own great-grandfather. And oh, yeah. just like disgusted. <laughs> yeah. Predestination paradox. Yeah. Right, right. You know, I like, I like, I like uh, O'Brien's reaction to that. When he goes, ah, oh, I can't wait to get back to the future and and find and have you find out that I never existed. And he just goes, ah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was a, again another great episode. Yeah, yep. made with yeah. love, made with love. Absolutely. Oh God, yeah. And in the same token as well, the uh, the Voyager episode flashback. Yeah. As well, that's another one that was made with some real love as well. Yeah. I'm gutted we never got a Sulu spin-off from Same. that. I always felt like that that really was that felt like a backdoor pilot to like a Sulu series, but we never got it sadly. No. Yeah, uh, I liked how they tied it into Star Trek Six as well. That was yeah, I like that they recreated scenes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was quite cool. Yeah, I mean there, there was I think from memory there was only one slight issue and that was Valtain. Yes. Because he was alive. After he was alive every... at the end of Star Trek 6. Yeah. It's just a cardboard cutout they put out the end. That's fine. <laughs> it's just, yeah, this is, he's all right. Yeah. It's, it's like, he's it's... okay. He's okay. Honestly, I'm not lost to the crew. I don't want to have to do the paperwork. It's like <laughs> Woody and Buzz Lightyear. Holy fellas, you're all right. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. But yeah, another great, another great little tribute to... A, a fantastic film. Oh, and again, God. done with love. Yeah. But that was the era, though, of Star Trek back then. It was <laughs> people who loved the franchise. They loved mm. everything about it. I mean, gosh, they used to accept fan submissions for yeah. scripts. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite Voyager episodes, Death Wish. Yeah. Um, that was a fan submission. Wow. I did not know you that. Know? Um... And I think how Ronald D. Moore got on TNG was he submitted a script as a fan. And because I think he was dating somebody who was working on the production. And she said to him, like, you know, why did I work on the thing? Why don't you come for a tour? And if you meet one of them, give them the script, see what they think. And he got a job out of that. 
you know, it's this. This was a, a franchise that used to appreciate the fan input. Yeah. Now yeah. you've got CBS have got these draconian like fan film rules in place because they got th- so threatened by Axanar that we're yeah. doing a much better that, job. Well, looking really good as well from what I've seen of it. But exactly. You know, you watch that prelude to, to Axanar and oh my God, it's like, why didn't we get... If, if CBS was smart, they would have hired those guys. Yeah. And said, we will pay for you to do that. We will pay for it. And well, they will leave out the executives to leave you alone and get on with it because... I don't want them ruining it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Do you remember Red Letter Media did that thing where they counted how many producers were in the credits? And it got to, like, 22 or something. I, I, I did that for my reviews as well. It's 20, yeah. it, it was 22. It, it was 21 for the most part and the occasional 22 producers. Like, talk about too many cooks in the bloody kitchen. Yep. I imagine a lot of those we've just given it by, by, by just just honorary or, or you know kind of Nepotism. Um, yeah well yeah <laughs> yeah probably yeah yeah, yeah. but you know um you talk about f- fan projects that yeah. have been uh, where 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 they've been shut down completely uh, and you know new legislation has been put in place or new policies have been put in place to prevent people from making you know feature length uh, fan films <clears throat> but you know uh reaver will appreciate this the resident evil 2 remake just to switch gears for a second um there was a project by uh it's a small company called invader studios and they were making a resident evil 2 remake before resident evil 2 remake was a thing um and it got really far they they'd essentially uh, done it in the same style as what Capcom eventually made anyway. Um, and they got so far with it, it was a completely, you know, unfunded project. It was it was um, non-profit. And they got a cease and desist from Capcom as soon as that remake got announced. And now the difference, the difference there was Capcom invited the studio to come and um, essentially work with them on the actual Resident Evil 2 remake and what they were able to do was to take their project that they would made and turn it into a different game which then became Daymare uh, 1994 which is a, a great little indie game 98. really the uh, 98 beg your pardon yeah because it was it was a uh, reference to Resident Evil um yeah. and and they kept a lot of the um you know, they kept a lot of the assets in place. And they actually made quite a successful little game, which then got a sequel. That's which how... Which was Yes, it was Sandcastle, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that... That's a company doing things right. You can bring fans into the fold and have them as consultants. Because ultimately, they're your audience. Yeah. Well... Sonic Mania is another example. Yeah. That started yeah. out as a fan game. And then Sega yeah. went, we like this. Yeah, yeah just not do the Nintendo route. Oh, you've made this fan game. We're going to sue the shower, yeah. Whereas now we've, <coughs> we've, we've literally just got the people who used to bully us for being Star Trek fans being in charge of Star Trek. Yep. And that is so true. I don't think I've actually heard it put better than that. Nope. They're the people that used to make fun of us for being fans of Star Trek, and we all felt it, especially when we were growing up. The 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 the, the vitriol that came out of these people. Oh, the I hatred. didn't tell anybody. Like when yeah. I was a teenager. Yeah, it was it was it was kind of it wasn't taboo. It was just it was kind of like self preservation. If you had yeah. any hope of touching a woman, you just didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, dear God. <laughs> well, yeah, there were ways around that, but we won't go into the dark, sordid past. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, but it's like I was a D&D player. You know, I like mm. to do role play. I can't exactly impress people by saying, have you seen my helm of disintegration here? Like, it's just not happening. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> but it also oh, kind of gave us a form of camaraderie as well. Yeah. Because when you did meet another Star Trek fan, yeah, it was just this instant connection that just yeah. brought people together. And you see, you, you see evidence of that with Henry Cavill and that interview yeah. he gave, but where he literally made an instant friend there within three seconds. Yeah. And that was be- That was a beautiful moment. Um, but yeah, you never, you never really talked about it because it would, it would. Um, it was socially mar you. And well, it's not like I mean, it's not like today where if you say you're a geek, it's kind of a cool thing and hip and everything like that. No, no, no. You, you used to get your head beaten up, Christ. Yeah, this, like, this was pre-Marvel making comics popular. Yeah. Yeah. And you got like, uh, shows like The Big Bang Theory that brought it more into the forefront. And how many people watched that? It was one of the most, it yeah. was the most watched television show in America. Um, I think it's sort of on par with Friends because... I, I blame Big Bang Theory so for so much. So do I. So do I. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Like I said, when I first watched The Big Bang Theory, it was like, my people! You know they're 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 recognising us and and it it was it was nice because um, uh, the first couple of seasons were sort of they were they were coming from a a, a, a positive sort of place but you notice as the show progressed it got nasty oh. and it oh, got God, to yeah. the it got to the point where where you know the 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 four nerdy guys. Um, they, you know, most of them married, and the the wives were really kind of intolerant to what made these guys special in the first place. I mean, none of the characters are actually redeemable in any way, shape, or form. They're actually horrible people, uh, if you really look at it. But they 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 claim to fall in love with these guys. And yet they fail to accept who they are at the core level. And they're constantly trying to change them and say, well, yeah, you, you, oh, you want, you want personalized action figures. Well, yeah, if you think that's cool, you should definitely do it. So, you, you, you know, and, and that show then started really making it into the mainstream. And I think it, it really damaged the culture. Certainly, I mean, it's definitely the betrayal of geek culture. I mean, yeah, there are aspects of it, certainly, but how those four main characters kind of made nerds, if you like, look. Like, not being funny, yeah, I played D&D, I love Star Trek. Yeah. You know, I did a lot of stuff, but I was always a rocker. I always used to dress in ripped jeans with a, like, a rock t-shirt on, usually something like Alice in Chains or Pearl Jam. Nice. You know? yeah. And when we did D&D, it was basically four rockers sat around a table drinking beers and just having a laugh. You know, We didn't have bloody pocket protectors and a bloody cape. No. <laughs> we just looked like normal dudes. Like... Yeah. Yeah, they were portrayed... They were portrayed all wrong, weren't they? They, yeah. they were they were they were the basement dwellers, you know, it, the basement it, dweller the, stereotype. The stereotype for what people think nerds are. Exactly. It's the stereotype from the perspective of a jock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we also had shows like the IT crowd as well. Yeah, but, yeah, we had that over here. But the IT crowd, I'd actually say, is better, and it's. I don't think it's trying to put geekdom in a bad light, whereas. I think Big Bang Theory, for me personally, I think it was it, it was a deliberate attack in a way. Yeah. While trying to sell itself as this, oh, look, this pretty comedy. And they're wrong. There were some funny moments in it. But yeah. fundamentally, that felt more nefarious. Yeah. As opposed to something like the IT crowd, which was just plainly a comedy which mocked all sides. Yeah. You know, yeah, balanced. It was a very balanced comedy because mm. we know that, that you know there's those there, there are anyone who's like any experience with IT, you know, what's the general thing people tell you from IT? Let me turn it, on and off, again. it off and on again, yeah. <laughs> it's because it's kind of true. Yeah. 
I mean, I still remember that episode of like, this is the internet. I'm just pointing at that box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she drops it and they all start freaking rioting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> but it, is, it is interesting how much like geek culture is now compared to what it used to be because mm. as we say it wasn't something you could just go out and talk about it was i mean this is why you know on a personal level for me why i had such a close relationship with my dad because he was a nerd yeah he watched star trek the first time round, kind of yeah. thing yeah you know, and so Same he here. was the guy that I shared that fandom with. Yeah, and it was a special connection, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know, he, I, I still remember being four or five years old when my dad put on Balance of Terror, the very first episode I ever watched, yeah. and being mesmerised. And then I went on to just binge watch every VHS tape my dad had of every, you know, the movies, TOS, whatever he'd recorded off the telly. You know, yes, children VHS, it was a thing. It was. Um, oh, it was a great thing. Uh, it was a great thing. Be kind, uh, rewind, children. <laughs> I remember putting 50p's in the back of the TVs. <laughs> you oh, know, oh, God, yeah. But, you know, but that was the thing that we shared. And I can still remember being eight years old and my dad taking me to the Star Trek exhibition at London mm. at eight. Yeah, wow. and I bought the a TOS phaser, like replica, that my kids play with right now. And in the loft, I've got a TOS tricorder that my dad bought me from there. Oh, nice. Nice. You know, those are the... Ever. And I think this is why I'm particularly vitriolic towards modern Trek, because it's it, it feels like they're attacking something that is like my last connection to my late father. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, we... we exactly the same because two years after he passed enterprise ended and i remember wow. crying at the end of that last episode yeah when you know all right that last episode of enterprise was not great but that final scene where you see the enterprise d yeah and then the tos enterprise and then finally the <laughs> nx01 and you hear the music playing and i just remember crying yeah and then star trek comes back and i'm like what the hell have they done I think the drinker summed it up in a Doctor Who review, and he's like, imagine you've got a favoured teddy bear. Now imagine somebody's come along and stuck a thing on it. You know, well, I'm trying to... Stuck a dildo on it with spikes and everything, and, yeah. you know, <laughs> and told you... And then painted all these things, slogans on it, and they've told you that it's actually better. It's better, this bear. Yeah. It's literally that. Trying that's to convince something you. That, yeah. And that's something Kurtzman doesn't understand, nor the people that work for him. Fans have this connection, this emotional connection. These shows mean a lot to us. And kind of like you said, they're just basically telling us, no, you're wrong. Ours is better. Yeah. I mean, I tried to be fair to Discovery when it first came on in season one. Right. I tried to be fair. I remember I was in a Facebook group that I was, I'd been in for donkeys. And I literally wrote like a small review because I saw people sharing their thoughts. And, I, and it wasn't even like horribly offensive. I highlighted some things that I liked, a couple of things. There wasn't a lot. Um, I, I, I highlighted things that I didn't like, and then I highlighted what I'd like to see going forward. And I ended up being given a load of abuse and banned from that group. <laughs> Cause, and I was like, what the hell's going on? I didn't even get this much like crap when I was defending Enterprise. Jeez, so much for tolerance and inclusion. Well, it's, it's inclusivity through exclusivity. That's right, right. Yeah. And, you know, and... Literally, it, was, it wasn't a scathing review because I, I even tried defending on the grounds of, look, I know it's not going to be perfect. You know, TNG wasn't ideal in its first season. You know, everybody has a rocky start. No, everyone remembers Move Along Home. Come on. Yeah. You know, but I tried to be fair to it. And then it's just progressively got worse. Like season two was a friggin' what the hell? Like Burnham's mum, some super ninja from the bloody future. I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, I I I I couldn't fathom. And now you see, find out, can, on, and also the the auto the autopilot function on the Red Angel suits. They didn't actually have to go into the future. No. An autopilot function. All right. So what was the point? Not only that, but the the situation had been resolved by the time 
they yeah. were going into the future. <laughs> it's just like, okay, um, it's like uh, self-destruct, isn't it? So if you've, it, you know, in, in any Star Trek show, you've, you, we're all familiar with the self-destruct, and it's always a countdown, and we, we, we're like, oh, someone's got to save the day before the self-destruct goes off. So then, uh, say, for example, with the Zen Kethi episode, um, O'Brien, uh, O'Brien goes uh, to Cisco. O'Brien to Bridge. I've fixed it. We now have full control of the ship. And Cisco just sits there going, "Now nah, we still got to blow the ship up." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why? You know, shut the damn thing off. We're all gonna, you know. Oh no, yeah. no, no. Did we save the day? Uh, Discovery, do you read us? Yeah, yeah, we read you. We've saved the day. You don't need to go into the future, uh, guys. Uh, guys, turn turn it off. Turn it off. Nah, I think we're just going oh. to the future. Yeah. Fuck. It is just stupid. It's oh dear lord. When I was I was uh, I I had the same experience as you, Zell, when yeah. it came to season one. I was intrigued to a degree. And it was because it was the first time I'd seen Star Trek on, uh, Star Trek on television in in in, uh, in so long, you know, nearly a decade. Come on, or over a decade. Over and, a decade, twenty seventeen. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and despite my cor- my caution going in, having seen the daft fucking concept trailer that came out, <laughs> or the first trailer, which was shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in spite of having seen that. I thought, I want to give this show a chance. So the first and second episode, I was like, mm, okay, I can sort of, I'm beginning to see what's going on. Okay, yeah, that was really fine. Yeah, oh, okay, well, what, who the, what the fuck are those things? Those are Klingons? <laughs> exactly mirroring <laughs> yeah, Bashir, you know. At the D- yeah, the DS9 crew reaction to the TOS Kling- Klingons. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same reaction. And then season one sort of came to an end. I'd already figured out where Lorca was from because yeah. b- because it just it, it, I always said to the missus um, because I, you know, I'm always like, uh, there's a plot twist. And she's like, you didn't see that coming. I said, no, I, I always said to the missus, if I can figure it out, it's not very well written. Nope. Indeed. And the worst part is, Lorca was probably one of the better characters. Yeah, yeah I actually really liked him, and I thought I he was Lorca. he was a pretty good captain character, yeah. really. Yeah. And then season two happened, and I was I I I I got halfway through the season, and then just went, I'm out. Six months, I was out, and then I started a YouTube channel. Yay! <laughs> yeah, hey. It, it is that. It, it is just that progressive down downward spiral, isn't it? Yeah. Or it's like, oh dear lord. And the more we talk, the more I'm remembering. And I'm yeah. it's like Vietnam level flashbacks here. <laughs> like, I've the seen end... some things, man, and some stuff. Oh, the yeah. uh, the TARDIS turbo lift system. Uh... Oh god, the the discovery is for basically the goddamn TARDIS. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I said I said I made that point in a, a Discovery Sucks video that I did. Yeah. Where are they falling? Where is this fucking system? And how how have we gone from what is essentially a tube in a shaft to a massively wide open area with tractor beam emitters carrying the turbo lift where it needs to go. How did we go from that to going, oh, you know what? Elevator shafts are a better idea than that. Well, they had holographic communication 10 years before Kirk. Yeah. Yep. And holodecks. Oh, yeah, and holodecks, yeah. And a few hundred years before they did it on the Defiant for those few episodes that they had it installed. Yeah. Yeah. They installed it because it was annoying. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh, it'd be much easier than, than, than sitting, a ca- sitting an actor in front of a camera. It'd be much easier to actually have them there. Yeah. I, I don't know if you count this stuff, but I do remember one of the uh, animated series from the original. One had the holodeck in one of the episodes. 
Which one was that? Which one was uh, that? Uh, the, the old one where they got the original crew back to do the voices for the characters. Yeah, the animators. Oh, really the animators. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really cheaply made. <laughs> But they did have one episode where there was in a holodeck and something went wrong with the computer, as per usual, and they got stuck in there. That seems about right. Yeah. I've watched the animated series in quite a lot, lot long time. Yeah, I actually have to rewatch that. I think, I think to be fair, yeah, I have to do exactly the same uh, because I, I watched, I watched it once, uh, uh, as much as I can say, but. It was just a car, a very. It was almost a, a carbon copy of the original series. Um, yeah. Just animated. In the... I, I watched it a lot as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. But, but then you but don't really understand that, it as a kid. Uh, alien crewman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were in the original series. Yeah, they, 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 they had a lot of alien crewmen. Because <laughs> it, it turns out it's cheaper to draw makeup than it is put it on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's nuts, man. That's good. That, was that, did, that was the only thing I ever criticised Star Trek for. A lot of the aliens just tend to be people with like stuff on their noses. Yeah. Are <laughs> uh, uh, slightly different ears. Yeah, or slightly different ears. Or ridges on their forehead. Yeah. What What do you think about the explanation in um, the chase? Oh, well, that one where they all come from the same genetic lineage. Yeah, it's and then the uh, the fou- the ironic thing was that is Salome Jens played that alien, who was essentially yeah. a founder, and then she went on to play a founder. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then that begs the question: Are the founders then connected to that race? This oh, well, race. Well, they said they said that they were once solids. Yeah. And they evolved, so I would assume that yeah. In to be, to be yeah, honest with you, it. that's that's some interesting stuff. It's not quite as in, intricate as my uh, prophets interstellar deep space nine theory, but still. Yeah, well, you, it's coming from a simple mind, you see. Nah. <laughs> oh, it's all up here, mate. Um, <laughs> but no, if if you think about it, think about it this way: you got the Salome Jen's character in the chase, and she was part. Uh, she she was obviously the last. Uh, the, the the last one off the planet, she left the message and spread it across yeah. the universe, uh, across so the galaxy. I'll come together in unity. <laughs> 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 and, and, and then she yeah. she made it she made it to the uh, they or they made it to the gamma quadrant and evolved to become the founders. And then counter to what they you know used to be like, as soon as they started evolving, people started turning on them. Their creations essentially had started turning on them. And then over time, they just forgot because we we know that the shapeshifters live a very very long time. Yeah. yeah. So that's that 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 would be an interesting way to tie it together. And and that the would points, be a very good way of doing it. The points the points that we make and in some ways it's it's the inspiration for making this stream. The points that we make as fans because we are analysing this stuff daily as we watch it, as we go. And the more we converse and the more we talk, the more we bridge the gaps, mm. which we cannot do with Discovery and with New Trek. We just can't bridge the gaps because the gaps don't lead anywhere. Nope. They don't just go the anywhere. Just and sadness. <laughs> well, it's yeah. Just ship mountain. Yeah, it did, yeah. To escape the shit mountain, yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of that scene from Jurassic Park. That is one big pile of oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. God of Jurassic Park. <laughs> Jurassic Park was great. Jeff Goldblum was. was great. Jeff Goldblum's great in anything, really. He is great in everything. We should just have him in Star Trek, sod it. Oh, <laughs> mate, if you had him as the captain. Oh, you God, imagine... the captain. He'd be amazing. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you set a course. And you go over there, and I, I, I think we should do that. Uh, it looks like Klingon Bird of Prey says, that's a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully then one of the crew members would be like, well, at least it's not a spiky dildo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> oh, God, we, could have a, we could have a fly episode with the transporter. There oh, go. God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. I don't play. It makes his return. <laughs> you know, I think the Orville could do it. 
Because the Orville, the Orville can get anyone to guest star, even Liam Neeson. <laughs> At this point, we may as well want, we may as well petition for a Galaxy Quest sequel. Oh, it's still going to be better than what we had from New Trek. Yeah, just and, stick Tim and, Allen on the bridge. Come and on. that and that would be minus Alan Rickman, and it would still be better. Yeah, but Alan Rickman was fantastic. I can't fucking miss him. Oh, God rest his soul. It's fucking tragic. Oh, it's it's funny you I, I was rewatching. I was rewatching Robin Hood: Prince of Thieves with the oh, misses recently. Yeah. And he makes that movie. Oh, of course uh, he does. He, he is the true star of that film. He takes hey, all the focus. It's our wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> and cancel Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> It's when it's when he's it's when he's trying to strip her down and the priest yeah. is just going to and he just goes yes yes come on <laughs> like he just really oh. wants to get down to it yeah do right <laughs> fucking hell what a Legend. great film I love that film and he 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 definitely takes a focus off the fact that uh, Kevin Costner's got an American accent playing Robin Hood. Oh dear God, yeah. But he really does take the focus off because you just think this is a much more interesting character. But again, further to the conversation we were having uh, last night, I think you missed it, Zell, is we yeah. were talking about um, villains. Mm. And we've spoken before about villains in Star Trek, for example, but villains in general and how mm. the, the line between good and evil in, in modern narrative storytelling is increasingly uh, becoming more increasingly blurred and it, they constantly strive to have this whole thing of the he's not a villain he's misunderstood yes yeah, yeah. And it's exactly what we were saying yesterday either way however you frame gold cut he's evil yeah yep. he's irredeemable what we and, and what we want as an audience we we want to understand him but we don't we, we don't ever forget that he's evil no evil is oh. something to be understood not admired yeah, yeah. right so Paul Ducart is irredeemable in the eyes of everybody but him and is the hero in his own eyes yeah he you, is you, you, you wait Kurtzman's going to do a series called Star Trek Ducart Oh fuck no no you you uttered the words that's going to manifest it you know what the power oh you have I, I, hope the, I hope the actor says I'm not going to be in that shit in <laughs> <laughs> my character publicly as well in how many yeah. women he sexually assaults right <laughs> oh like when you <coughs> call on uh Terra North and uh, yeah he knocked that one up and he says and fuck no, that was it. Sorry, I was mixing the yeah. stations up. Yeah, Kira Knight was Deep Space Nine. Yeah, uh, Kira's mum, and then he tried to get Kira. I mean, don't hate the yeah. player, hate the game. I guess. Right. Yeah. But well, yeah, well, it's it funny. Well, it's funny because. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say he knocked up and he blamed it on the power as a sign. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's so funny because he'd already gone through everything he did in season six. He has mental breakdown. Yeah. He's he's you know even more evil now, siding with the Pares, but he's still Gul Dukat. He's still Gul Dukat. Like, he's still got to, you know, womanize and, you know, have all his, you know, victims, if you will. Yeah, oh, but I do, I do sort of feel sorry for him because he had to sleep with Kai Win. <laughs> he didn't have to. He chose oh, that. He chose that. He chose yeah, that. That was his choice. <laughs> I can't imagine what possessed him to do that. About five points. Yeah, about five uh, points. I've, I've banged every other woman on the planet, you know. Like, I've got to work, work my way up. Got to work my way up to religious order. <laughs> you, Descartes. About... <laughs> you need to lay off the sauce. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Too much of that Chateau Picard or something. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what is she? Uh, what is she? A three pinter? <laughs> oh, I said five. Uh, but fair enough. I, 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 I think um, the full barrel. <laughs> do, you, do you think he woke up the next morning and went, "I've fucking canard, Jesus, 
fuck. <laughs> God damn you, Quark. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's so Jesus. funny. We talked about it yesterday, but it's like, mm. how did nobody notice that that was Ducat? I mean, he, yeah. everything about it was Ducat. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like uh, the, his manner, the way he walks. Mark Alemo plays it straight. He, the way he struts and swaggers. Yep. And it's Ducat. He, he's just constantly upright. He sounds like Ducat. He laughs like Ducat. You know, Kai... Uh... He murders people like Ducat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, poor. So in poor. fairness, he gets. <laughs> in fairness, he does take out Win in a bit of a different way than he normally would take out somebody. So you know. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I suppose. Power eighth powers or whatever. Yeah. But he came against the motherfucking Cisco. <laughs> uh, he did. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, the only black space Jesus I recognize. Yeah. Agreed. Hundred yep. percent. Yep. And, yep. and his mighty ship, the pimp sand. Yep. <laughs> Janeway gets promoted to Admiral. That's cute. I got promoted to Godhood. <laughs> Kneel before the jambalaya. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Right, guys, talk talk amongst yourself. I've just I'll I'll be right back. Right on. Get All right. right on. Uh, right on. Yeah. Behave yourselves while I'm gone, yeah. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> Good. So, how are we going to do <laughs> How quickly can we demonetize the stream? Mm. <laughs> Anyone got any only fan suggestions? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I did love that he gets promoted to godhood. Yeah. I, I hear Guinan said that the uh, Cardassian occupation of Bajor was not about race. Right, of course not. I did hear that. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, about God. feelings. Mm. How? Why did they even bother with that in uh, season two with Guinan? That was. I, I find it funny that she complained about like slavery and stuff like that, but then back in the 1800s, she was more than happy to hang around with a bunch of slave owners. Yep. Oh, yes. Not to mention that. she knew Picard back in the day. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> you would have thought have seen him and been like, hey, no, hang on a second here. Time travel shenanigans. <laughs> and she looked, it's funny how back in the 1700s, or 1800s, I forget when they were, um, she looked more similar to how she does in TNG than she does in 2024. Yeah, yeah. the age really slow, aren't they? You're yeah. not talking about Guinan, are you? Yeah, yeah we, we are. Guinan's sudden Benjamin Button moment in season two of The Guard, where she looks <laughs> a lot younger. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> and forgets she knew Picard. And she has a weird bottle to summon a cue, and you know. <laughs> and how she's okay moaning about slavery, but she was quite happy to hang around with slave owners back in the 1800s. Yeah. You know, it's Everyone's got a past. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, did, do you ever hear that theory that the Cardassians were actually some Bajorans that got stranded there and became the Cardassians? Yeah, there is a, an indication in there that there's a like, genetic link. It's sort of hinted at, isn't there? That's why they're yeah. able to conceive children together. Really? Yeah. I've never heard this theory. Yeah. yeah. So it goes it, back. It stems from that uh, light ship episode where... Yeah, uh, Explorers. Um, Because when Cisco makes it to Cardassia, um, they say, oh, we've miraculously found these wreckages on Cardassia Prime. (laughs) You arrived (laughs) coincided perfectly with it. Mm. Like, yeah, that's a fact that they do have, like, Zial is an example. You know, they're able to procreate together Mm, without too much effort. So that's where that theory comes from. That's been, that's been around for quite a while, that theory. I remember that back in the day. That being chucked around. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. And that, that, that episode, um, I, I really liked it. And I thought it was such a um, kind of a warm ending when it, I was it's younger. It's a beautiful father-son episode. It is. It is. And it's and, cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought it was uncharacteristic of the cut to be so nice at the end of the episode and that's my 
original thoughts when I was watching the episode for the first time. And when you know when you grow up and you mature, you think, yeah. And then you rewatch it and you see it in a different light because he's quite clearly full of shit. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, he's he's quite clearly uh, making it all up. You know, they, they've they've known about the the solar uh, the solar powered vessels for mm. probably for decades, if not longer. And oh, yeah. they just don't want to admit that Bajorans did it first. Um, I wonder if that's how they found out where their jaw was from going through them ship's logs. Yeah, probably. It would, it would be. I, I imagine it would be because of that, yeah. Because um, it, it all depends on when Cardassia became spacefaring. Mm. But and if, if that the, ship had logs. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Because it might have had it in like paper form. Yeah, I was going to say parchment. It'd be parchment, wouldn't it? Because, yeah. You know. Yeah, and it just proves that the Bajorans were spacefaring before most other races. Yeah. Yeah, and it was only it was only by sort of sheer fluke of design that they made it so far. Um. In those ships. Hmm. Because and it, it's I think somewhere buried in there is is a uh, a cautionary tale. You know, you venture out, you're asking for trouble. Especially well, that's what yeah. Q basically hinted that in Q who wasn't essentially, it? Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. You There's don't know what's out there. Yeah, and something else I noticed about that episode too is that one of the first episodes where Cisco really embraces his love for Bajor. Yeah. I'd, I'd say <clears> no. I don't recall an earlier episode in season three. Nothing springs to mind, no. No. Was yeah, Destiny I know before one or two, after? He's, he's very uncomfortable with it at the time. Was Destiny before or after that? Uh, that was earlier in season three. See, that's when he started. That's when he started believing in the prophecies. Yeah, that. Oh yes, that's true. right. The Sword of Stars. That's right. Yeah. The meteorites. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good episode. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it and that's oh, the a best sort of cautionary tale of misinterpreting religious texts as yeah. well. And the best part is that uh, Bajoran Vedic from that episode uh, was Kazuf in uh, Stargate SG-1. In yeah. The film. yeah. Yeah, he was. He's, he's been in so much. It's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to DS9's credit, they handled the subject of religion very well and yeah. very delicately. Yeah. They didn't just poo-poo it. No. Yeah. Like, I think TNG did a couple of times. It was very much kind of done respectfully. And as I say, how they how they deal with the idea of the prophets, I think is interesting. Um, you know, the, I always thought they, I always, God, they never did more with like the orbs and stuff like that. I think this they idea wanted of, to originally. Because this I idea think of the orbs were like, a bit of DS Ex Machina, wasn't it? Well, yeah. But the idea of these orbs were sent 10,000 years ago to teach the Bajorans and what have you, and they all have these different properties and yeah. stuff like that. Could, I just thought that was the, kind of interesting. Could the prophets be the future evolved form of the Bajorans that, that was became my timeless? Theory. Yeah, that was my the theory. The same way yeah. of Bajor. Yeah, that was basically what my theory was. I thought it's interstellar before interstellar. You know, yeah. Yeah. the Bajorans from the future ensuring their own creation effectively by guiding the Bajorans and guiding Cisco, because you look at all the times they interfere as such. Yeah, you know, like taking over that woman to get yeah, knocked up or, to become Cisco's mum. <laughs> or when that uh, Bajoran poet was thrown out back into the future, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then they and they, they even say they sent him there for Cisco to help him accept his role as emissary. Yeah. 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 You know, he goes, everyone must go back to the caste system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's a and that's what made me think. And it's only after I'd seen the movie Interstellar that it made me think of that and go, Jesus Christ, could this be unintentionally what they've achieved? Because I don't think that would be their intention. And it's cool how stuff like this can come up in these thirty-year-old shows that we've all seen a million times over, and we can still have these theories. And there's enough going on that make us want to know more. Well, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we're coming up with better story plot points than the current writing staff. Exactly. You know, I mean, we had the discussion 
uh, Danger Man, about like what if we were in charge when Discovery came on, what would we do differently? And we came up with better ideas than yeah. what we actually got. <laughs> like, I believe it. <clears throat> uh, you know, I mean, essentially, to give you a sort of quick rundown as such, the idea was, yeah, we still have the Discovery. Burnham would be the captain, and you'd have your main crew, and we'd have it set post-Voyager, not 10 years yep. before Kirk. Because at least that would explain why the mushroom drive. Mm -hmm. And I said, the mushroom drive could be based on that technology from the season one episode of Voyager, you know, the one with the try and steal the technology. The spatial uh, trajectory. The they get used. Yeah. And they, that, they fold space and say, mm. this is what is based on that technology, the mushroom drive. Yeah, it's the and hospitality the, people, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. the, the uh, and basically the discovery, the reason it looks so different to other Starship designs is because it needs to be designed around this new engine. Mm. You know, Discovery is a prototype. And then you'd have this episode of them jumping to different places. And they're there for a set time limit. I kind of stole an idea from Sliders. Sliders, like, yeah. yeah. They only have a set time and then they have to jump back to their original location. And that kind of opens up a lot of... That's a far better premise for a Star Trek show if you're bringing it back. Mm. You guys have already put a lot more effort into that than uh, the people that made that show did. I mean, personally speaking for me, if it, I, I wouldn't even do Discovery. I would... Because my thing is, if you're bringing back Star Trek after a long period of time, you damn as hell bring it back with the Enterprise. Enterprise F. Oh, yes. Enterprise F from Star Trek Online. They could have gone to the guys at Cryptic and said, we want to use your Enterprise and your crew. Because the characters uh, the are there. Said, yes. You've got most of the work done for you. Yep. And say, we want to use your Enterprise. You know, I love the Odyssey class. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I personally love the Odyssey class. Um... And through playing the game, you get to know some of the crew. Like, one of the fun facts I love is Kiryoshi O'Brien is the chief engineer. Oh, interesting. Now, how nice would that be if you had, at the end of the first episode, old man O'Brien being given a tour of the engine room by his son? That would be cool. Sort of like, like, similar to how McCoy appeared at the end of Encounter at Farpoint. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember that. Did they still avoid the transporter? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Admiral insisted on coming by shuttle. But, you know, that's what I would have done. I would have literally just... Because Cryptic would have bent over backwards yeah. on that one. Oh, you absolutely. Know. And uh, yeah, the, the Vekel Shon has got a really cool backstory. He's an Andorian whose family are presumed missing or dead after a Borg attack on their colony. And he has, like, survivor's guilt because he wasn't there to protect his family. He was out being a Starfleet officer. Mm -hmm. You know... But do you relate his in... family back to Enterprise with Shran? Uh, you don't I don't... have to. You don't have to. You don't really have to do that. That's unnecessary. He's just an Andorian captain in Starfleet. Yeah. And it's really interesting because he was going to resign from Starfleet and in the in-game lore, it's actually Data in the body of B4 who actually convinces him, no, no, take the Enterprise needs a captain, I've recommended you. Yeah, because they dropped that data text over B4 line, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, but again, that's how I would do it, because as I say, you bring him back Star Trek after a long period of time, you bring it back with the Enterprise. Yeah. And you move the story forward, because that's what they did with the next generation, and it <laughs> worked. And yeah, yeah, I know people point to news articles at the time where people were like against it. But the thing is, TNG earned the respect. It did. You know, that show could have been killed quite easily after season one. Yes. You know, um, Code of Honor, anyone? But, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know, we're going to go to Planet Wakanda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't do that here. Get uh, the Enterprise some shields. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's literally that. It could have thing, but it worked hard and it earned the respect to the fans, even those who were wary of Star Trek coming back with a new ship, which looked weird as hell. I mean, you know, I love the Galaxy class, but it looks weird as hell. So it like, looks like a Cobra with its hood up, and it's like coming up the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does, especially but, when it's separated. You've got, you've got a new crew, you've got some bald Frenchman with an English accent in command. From Yorkshire. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> and a Klingon on the bridge. And, you know, it's very weird and different, but mm. it worked because the writers did such a great job. Mm. Yeah. And that's something that modern Trek hasn't been able to achieve, it, as nope. far as I'm concerned. They hasn't earned the respect through the writing. Like, Discovery right. could have been written really well, and they could have made it work. But well, they had they... the writers have the life experience. Well, it's partly that, but it 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 was a doing a prequel was always going to be a crutch for them, because yeah, they they can draw and mutilate anything uh, anything they want. They have no they have no creativity to um, to receive the passing torch. They have no uh, ability to come up with anything new. They, and I don't care what the, you know, it was a case of money spoke but with Anas Abdeen. They took the story he created and turned it into Discovery. That is what I, I believe firmly. They well, even plagiarized if you don't, even the if you shit. Don't go with that, even if you don't go with that, you can clearly see that somebody came in with a pitch for a sci-fi show and some guy in a suit said, but can you make it Star Trek? Yeah. Yeah. Even ignoring the Anas Dean thing, right? Yeah. It literally, it's not Star Trek. It's just got a Star Trek veneer, a skin suit. Yeah. Slapped over it. Yeah, and this is the same way I feel about Strange New Worlds. Like, don't run. There's a few episodes of Strange New Worlds I don't mind. I think they're actually... <laughs> Not, not too bad. Yeah, but we talked still, about that. Yeah, Valley, you're looking at it and going, something's not right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what? Why is Pike's hair getting more and more like Johnny Bravo's? <laughs> <laughs> what, why, you know, it's the steam. Going, why has Spock got autism? Like, why does Liliana Khan never smile? Why? Why did they cast uh, Jim Carrey's? more attractive younger brother is fucking Kirk. Kirk, yeah. <laughs> why Why does the bridge look... I mean, when you look at uh, In the Mirror Darkly, and they've got it on it, and they've got the whole TOS aesthetic going on, it worked. Mm. It didn't need to make everything look... But again, as you say, making a prequel is just a crutch. And that's because it's not a prequel, it's a reboot. Yep. Yeah. Everything they've done yeah. is well, a reboot. And they proved that in season two when they changed the date of the eugenics war. Yes. So everything they've done is effectively a reboot. Whether they want to admit it or not, it's not in the same timeline as pre-2005. And the best part is they're not smart enough to realize that they did it. They admitted that they changed the timeline, and they're just not smart enough to acknowledge that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all right, Enterprise was a prequel that nobody asked for, but it's still, again... They worked hard. They did some good writing. There's some great episodes, and it kind of worked. They didn't go right. overboard with it. They tried to explain certain things as best they could. Well, they you patched know. the blanket, didn't they? They patched yeah. the blanket, and it, it it was almost bloody seamless. Yeah, and if we, <laughs> I, I can guarantee, if we've got those extra seasons showing the Romulan mm. War to the eventual birth of the Federation, God, that would have been amazing. Yeah. Because that's what, especially when you look at the NX refit, where they add the secondary hull, very TOS style with the deflector. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love the fact that initially transporters weren't really used for people very yeah. early on because they weren't yeah. deemed safe enough. And people didn't want they to use them. They have a ship cook. Yeah. I love the fact their uniforms were basically NASA astronaut suits. Yeah. I like those with, uniforms. With patches. Actually. Yeah, with the patches on. Yeah, I, I love the patches. We need more but, patches. But they meet, yeah. they need, they they integrated Star Trek very well into that uniform. Yeah, it, with some very simple trim, and the rank. They even and went back boom. to the whole swapping the colours round of gold and red. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and um, I said this to you before, Zell. Yeah. The what I loved about the pilot of Enterprise was the fact they had hinged doors mm -hmm. on a, it, and, and, and plasma screens, and um, the, the admirals wore shirts and ties, you know? Yep. So it's basic little bridges between our time and 100 years from now. And it worked. 
it, even it, the Borg episode was done very well, and I actually think they made the Borg seem scary. Yes. In that episode. I was just thinking about that episode, and it's one of those things where on paper that episode should not have worked. No. Like, and yet it did. And yep, it was it done did. really well. And it, it, it made them like a causality loop, didn't it? Yeah. You were yeah. Borg. It was yeah. it was a self uh, uh, it was a it was a loop, it yeah. was um, a rubber ross, yeah. basically uh, self fulfilling because, um, because you know the first contact exactly because the first contact the debris from the annihilation of the Borg sphere fell to the uh, it fell through the atmosphere crashed in the Antarctic, uh, all the Borg were basically frozen. They get reanimated, they assimilate people, they get a ship, they send a message to the Delta Quadrant, which then triggers the Borg to start making their way to Earth and to the Federation. And, yeah. and then they, the Enterprise meets them at uh, System J25. Yeah. And Q knew that was coming. Yeah, exactly. Causality. It, it's, it's great. And as you say, on paper, it shouldn't have worked, but it did. And the reason I say it made the Borg scary again is because Voyager had overused the Borg oh, so much, yeah. they lost they lost any threat feeling. Well, by the end, yeah, by the final episode, they've they've developed immunity to the Borg. <laughs> yeah, like they're just blasting Borg cubes with one torpedo. Yeah, I remember Enjoy seeing it. that, and I was just like, wow, like they've come a long way from uh, that TNG. Endgame yeah. was such a cop out. That was such a yeah. cop out. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Voyager, that episode Future's End didn't they go back to nineteen ninety six when the eugenics war was supposed to be taking place. Well, ninety seven is the original uh, year. Yeah. That was ninety seven. Yeah, so, ninety seven. I think the eugenics wars is one of the biggest holes that it's just getting impossible to patch up now, because yeah. it, it, it's it's a very messy um, concept, and really, to be honest with you, it was a Star Trek was a victim of its own sort of inception time, a time of inception, because oh, yeah, it's it suffers. Exactly, it's, it's the Demolition Man thing, isn't it? It's 1997, and LA is an absolute war zone, and you know <laughs> they've know. got anti-aircraft. Yeah, prophecy at this point. <laughs> Very true, but the date's all wrong, and <laughs> yeah. They always get yeah. the dates wrong. Back to the Future got the dates wrong. You know, 2015, flying cars and all of this stuff. Because, because oh, yeah. there was that yearning and and positive outlook for the future that I we're going... Overboard. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we're all going to be flying like the Jetsons soon. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, but the eugenics wars... If, if you imagine in the 60s, the eugenics wars was uh, 30 years away. And yeah. In th a lot can happen in 30 years. So, yeah, I always I always tend to just, it's why it's my one block I'm, a, I'm able to put on it and say, well, the eugenics wars, they say it happened around 1997, but yeah. what if it happened a little bit later? What if there was some temporary well, anomaly or something like that? Well, you could always pass it off of, like, you know, information was lost because the Third yeah. World War happened not long yeah. after that, which destroyed most major governments. Yeah. So there's there's any think, number of ways it can be explained yeah, away. Yeah, work around it. Exactly. Um, but the fact... The question uh, is, how the hell did they build the bottom they bear back then? Well, my thing with the eugenics war is <coughs> it can be, it can take place in the 90s because it's not our world. It's not our universe. No. Like, it's no. Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it can, and, and that's fine, but when, when you're travelling back to 1996, it's like... Okay, the eugenics wars took place. So okay, let's let's go back to Picard season shite. I mean, too. Um, yeah. you, you go, they go back to 2024 because it's the budget's convenient. And Star Trek yep. does that. I don't begrudge them that. Star Trek does that. It's a great way of saving money uh, on, on production. Absolutely fine. Not got an issue with it. How they did it, I've got the issue with that. But but um, they go back to 2024, and it's like. The eugenics wars were what twenty years ago. How did how did we recover? Right. And then they start messing with you know car Project Khan and all that shit that oh, they just God. fucking did my head in. Uh, it, it 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 was one of the final bullets that went through my head. Um, they were so obsessed with Khan. Oh God, they, they they've got like I say they've got the 
biggest nerdgasm for for Khan. Yeah. And it, he was this. He was this one. I'd say one off, but it, it, we know it was an episode and a film. But he was this single use villain that was absolutely fantastic and very well written, portrayed and you know and, and acted, um, and presented to us. But he was still a one off villain. So why? focus so much on it why why make ben a wing called cumber dick p- portray him in such a stupid way Come you know the <laughs> yeah. yes. I, I love Mauler's various descriptions when he's explaining uh, when he's um doing his breakdown of the multiverse and madness and he oh. <laughs> bay one called cumber dump you know and he's yeah. giving all all three of these names it's brilliant but yeah his portrayal of of, of calm was ridiculous um, was wrong. Yeah, and then you've got the Arnunian Singh, who's a descendant of Khan Noonien Singh. It's like, so you're a descendant, so you're genetically modified, and you got like super strength, have you? Or are you just highly intelligent? Or you, if you were, if you're highly Based intelligent. Based on that fairy tale episode, she's got two very super things. Oh, I think I think <laughs> she's got she's got necess- she's got very very good ballistics uh, experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, specializing I mean, in double know, barrel like weapons. A edition episode of that show with her. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not being funny. I mean, I've seen Ricardo Montalban's bare chest. I mean, I'd have a boner over him, to be fair. So I, I I, I'm not denying it. His face was fake, yeah. but he swears that he worked out just to get, like, ripped for Rafa Khan. It wasn't fake. That wasn't fake. That was, that was, that was Montalban, 100%. And I'm sorry, nobody can replace him. No. He, he, no. That, he, He's, he's one of those. It's one of those roles that only one actor. It's the same as Spock and Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I try to be very forgiving of like Ethan Peck with Strange New World, purely because I don't think it matters who you cast in that role. It's it's Leonard Nimoy's role. He yeah. made that character and is kind of irreplaceable. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of the problems with that are more on the writers. Oh, definitely. But I think even with like, if the writing was different. Even if the writing was good, I think Ethan Peck would still not quite nail it because oh, of the absolutely. fact of how well it's it's the same with Kirk in some regards. Well, and that's why we should not have gotten a prequel like that. Well, no, this is it, and this is why I argue like they should have started it with the Enterprise X. Yep. You know, we're bringing back Star Trek. It's the goddamn Enterprise. Like mm. that's what you need. Let's bring yeah. in a new generation, a new crew. And let's see how the galaxy's changed in thirty odd years. Well, even right. then, even then, if Make you're doing, if you're doing a prequel, uh, if you're doing a sequel, sorry, if you're doing a sequel to Nemesis, for example, anything set after Nemesis, yeah. then you still have uh, Star Trek actors who a aren't dead yet, b aren't too old. To be blown up and thrown fifty feet, <laughs> and you've got you've got quite a, a, a library of resources still, and you can utilize them before it's too late and they become too frail to work anymore. This is why I was annoyed with the Kirk portrayal because one, they could have done what the Mandalorian did with Luke; they could have done a deep fake, right? Yeah, something else and. The Mandalorian did was they actually brought Mark Hamill on set to show the body double. This is how I would perform it. Yeah. What's stopping them doing the same with Will Shatner? Sam exactly. Shatner, come in, help the body double. Tell them how you would act this role, and yeah. then he can uh, and then he can redo it. I can I can only see one problem with that. Shatner be like, no, only I can play Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Shatner's a boss, and I'm sorry. Even now, in his, even though he's in his nineties, he could probably still play the friggin' role <laughs> with explosions and being thrown across the ship because that man's still looking good for his age. Yep. That yeah, that was seducing all the uh, alien ladies. That, that is literally like that. He could still he do for, that for, for yeah. finding uh, green women. Uh, I'm not going to say anything too much more on that one. <laughs> uh, it probably would have uh, seduced the Bob Queen and given her an STD or something. <laughs> End of the 
<laughs> my, my seed is so powerful it overrides the collective. <laughs> they uh, the they Borg, just the Borg just worship Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Have you seen uh, my injection tubule? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like uh, resistance really is futile. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you see uh, Zulu just walking in? Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh no! Oh no! It's 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 descending into debauchery. However, will I stop this from happening on my channel? <laughs> Go for it! <laughs> I guess is this is this a good time for a joke about uh, time to take your daily injection of nanoprobes? Yeah. Well, I was <laughs> having a Borg bukkake, but you know. <laughs> oh this no! Is my first video. You can just imagine it. <laughs> just imagine it, can't you? Kirk, Kirk doing his rounds and just going, assimilate this. Yeah. I did oh, it better God. than Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Nano all over your face, neck, and chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just getting dirty as. Of course, that, that, that route now raises questions about Seven of Nine and her lesbianism. Yeah. You know, oh, you know, no. Yeah, you went there. And lesbianism. I oh, mean, does this mean God. Chakotay was so rubbish that he turned Seven lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it was a bit of a bland character. <laughs> well, it's a shame they well, never, like, did anything more with that, like, pre-Endgame, because it would have actually given him something to do, for starters, plus... Like, they could have actually developed that into something rather than I, just... Yeah, I felt so bad for Robert Beltran because Chakotay oh, yeah. deserved better. He was such an interesting character early on. But yeah. I think he became, a, he became a victim of the later seasons of Voyager where the focus was just Janeway, Seven, and the Doctor. Yep. Yeah. And then occasionally a bit of Tom and Balana, but really everyone else got pushed to the side. And Robert yep. Beltran he was a victim of that. He's criticised it, for Christ's sake. Mm. I don't blame him. Uh, the um, only, the only good right. thing with the Doctor is is such a good character. Oh, he is. But yeah. they kind of forgot about, oh, we've got other bridge crew. Yeah. Like, this is why, ha I, this Harry is why I think Harry Kim stayed an ensign, because they just forgot about him. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, I so... I actually gave him anything to do. Uh, yeah, things it, just happened to him. <laughs> he's, he, he's, he's arguably, arguably one of the most valuable officers on that ship you could yeah. you could easily make that argument you know think of all the things that he's accomplished he built a fucking um he built an astrometrics lab that shaved that was, was going to shave 10 years off their journey he's you know <laughs> he's he even says it in an episode he says look if i was back at if we were back home, I'd probably be a lieutenant commander by now. And yeah. and Janeway just goes, what? And? So? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm calling racism right now on Janeway. Really? She yeah, needs I'm to check racism. her privilege. Yeah, she needs to check her privilege. This is Asian hate. Stop Asian yeah. hate. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the funny thing was, though, they were going to kill him off uh, in Scorpion. Mm. But it got like voted sexiest man of the year or something, and they said, "Oh shit, we can't take him <laughs> off the show now. Is that popular?" No, instead they got rid of Kess, who I much preferred. Mm. Same. I loved Kess. I didn't want her to go. And then they replaced, and then they replaced her with some blonde bimbo in a cat suit. And it was like, what the hell's going on? Well, yes. as much as I, as much as I liked the character of Kess, I can safely say Seven of Nine made my teen years a lot easier. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, granted, you know, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on! It, it was. It, she was. She was a centre poster in Star Trek magazine for. I sake. know. I had that issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we all had that issue. I had a spare one just in case. Yeah. <laughs> they just got stuck, got stuck together. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh no, it never yeah. got stuck together. It just looked like a, a, a reverse pitching. Oh, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, kids, back in these days, we didn't have the internet to look at uh, certain things for entertainment. No, there was slow people. Yeah, there was yeah. never any things, uh, any any such thing as instant gratification. We had to work minutes, for it. Took it five to ten minutes to download result. an entire picture. Yeah. <laughs> it and that's it. The internet result. was good. Yeah. <laughs> it taught us the value of patience. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and and it was the same with with television and media versions of that uh, of such material. You had to wait yeah. for just the right yeah. moment, especially on Channel Five in the UK. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Late yeah, night how... five was interesting, I have to say. There was a lot uh, of interesting about it. Yes. Despite my comments about seven, I, I did grow to like the character, but yes. I always was resentful because I preferred Kess. Yeah. Yeah, I can agree um, with that. And seven very early on was not very well written. Because oh, she'd, um... she'd learn a lesson one episode, and yeah. then like three or four episodes le le later, she's apparently uh, forgotten it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, they did that with James too. She was kind of all over the place in that series. Yeah. Someone's put in the chat more like nine of ten. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah that's... Personal, but I found Jane way hotter than seven. At times, yeah. So did I. In that, in that uh, way, you can you you know you like the mature ladies. It's like a crush on your school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, in there. Uh, oppress me harder, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet she like, uh, <laughs> like made Harry come to her quarters and she was whipping him on a night. <laughs> Ask for that Don't promotion again, it. Harry. You want a promotion? <laughs> you want? <laughs> we uh. that promotion, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Sticks a boot in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It makes me laugh. They built up so much sexual tension between her and Chakotay, and then it never paid off. No. It's like, uh, come it... on, give him, give him his Akuchi Moya. Come on. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, well, you that know was they a had thing. to hooked up uh, when they were on that planet. They had to. Yeah. He built her a bath. Yeah, he built her a fucking <laughs> yeah. bath. And and I'm 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 surprised there weren't security cameras just making sure that she was okay. Yeah. yeah. But I love, I love how tasteful that was because they, they, if you watch carefully, and believe me, I have, if you watch carefully, um, <laughs> the reflections on the water are very concealing. <laughs> <laughs> because at one point, they, they, they're like inflation. They, 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 they inflate to the surface, uh, but you, mm. they, they cut it at just the right moment. <laughs> oh. And Bastards. he works out to the frame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and but no, I, I agree with that episode. I was going to go there next because that I, I found that episode really frustrating because it it it, had, it 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 sort of suffered from the limitations of writing a one episode wonder. It's it's a concealed episode. They don't ever pursue it again because because she's running the ship like a Starfleet ship, like she has admirals to answer to. It's a case of, look, we are running this ship, you and me. Maybe it's time we, we you know, we left a little bit of Starfleet behind. Kind of like uh, Rudy does in, in Equinox. Not yeah. to that extreme, but, you know, bend the rules a little bit because you can... Um, you you can... she just needs a little Cisco in her. <laughs> well, she had a little Tom in her at one point. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, that, that that's what we call a slippery situation. Yes. Oh god, <laughs> fraternising with an officer, eh? Yeah. Well, that you know, was an interesting scenario. Yeah, and she abandoned the kids on that planet. <laughs> what what a mother! Fuck you know. And that is that is that is just um, that is the epitome of of of, of a wrong decision. Isn't it really? It's just like, okay, uh, who wants to raise some children? No? Okay, let's leave them. <laughs> just fucking leave them. Fuck it. It's better for us to leave them in their natural habitat. 
But it wasn't naturally. It, it was wasn't the there. Random planet that landed on before yeah. the transformations got too far. Yeah, and it just it was they were damn lucky, damn lucky they found a planet in the Delta Quadrant that could sustain them. In the Delta yeah. Quadrant, when they can occupy every point in the universe simultaneously. Yeah. Just happens to be within reach of of, of Voyager. <laughs> what a bizarre episode that was. Yeah, one that was stricken from the record. <laughs> well, I just think it's funny that yeah. Voyager had to deal deal with like traveling back to the Alpha Quadrant when uh, in the season seven episode of TNG they had like a faster way of traveling. Uh, with yeah. That Borg technology. <laughs> well, they had that warp ten shuttle. They knew how to fix the problem after that episode. Why not send that shuttle back to Federation, get the doctors to fix the pilot, tell them what's going on, and then just, like, <laughs> send him back or something, <laughs> fix him again? I've never... I'll tell you what, in all my years, I've never heard someone say that before. What a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> send the shuttle to the Federation, just with a volunteer, get him to drop out you know they could just do they could do more experiments they could get yeah like you say they could get the doctor they, they send the doctor put install yeah. hollow emitters in there get the doctor to pilot it back learn how to drop out of transport just when you hit the federation and then go we've managed to do this uh voyage is in trouble uh we're still alive but we need we need some resources on this side and just get the doctor to do the fucking journey <laughs> Yeah. Maybe that's where they're getting all the photos <laughs> of Beatles from. All <laughs> <Or> the shuttles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's a torpedo shipment because they definitely fired more than they had. Yeah. I think someone actually counted them. Yeah. There was a YouTube video that did it. Well, they yeah. Counted every time they'd use a torpedo. Briefly. Um, shuttles too. Briefly oh, interrupting God. you guys. Apologies. Uh, we have Clayton in the chat. Clayton Romley is in the chat. Uh, hello, Danger Man and others joining you briefly while I'm out on the road. Hope you're all doing well. Well, we all hope you're doing well too, Clayton. Hello, uh, Clayton. Hello, I, I, I put a shameless little now. plug. Yeah. But the FBI <laughs> might be on to us at any point. You never know. <laughs> um, I put a little shameless plug to uh, Clayton's book in the bottom left corner. And incidentally, in the top left corner, uh, you, you have uh, a link, uh, well, a logo for uh, Zell's um band, band. Yes. yes i i play in a rock band people. yes you do um yes links are in the description you. people and i yes. will say this to, i will say this to clayton since we were talking about you the other day uh if you ever do an audiobook of the one danger man was telling us about I'll assume, uh, yeah. definitely let me know because uh my blind ass can't read the text <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah definitely do an audiobook Oh, a large print book, at least. Uh, you know what? Get Danger Man to read it in his Picard voice. How about that? <laughs> I, think, oh, I think every book should be read by Guildford Godfrey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, imagine it. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, a really intense emotional scene with that voice. <laughs> Did anyone watch that clip of Gilbert Godfrey reading Fifty Shades of Grey? No. I oh, look it up. I am now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, it's hilarious. Oh, my God. It was a sketch. It was brilliant. I've never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to have to watch that before I go to bed, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. As soon as we're done with this chat, that's the first thing I'm looking up. Oh, man. That's I'll brilliant. put it on the screen. I don't care. We need to share this with, with the world. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's glorious. I um yeah I won't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason, and it's not for fear of demonetization. It, it I don't play any live uh, or any moving image as much as possible on this channel. Yeah, you, be yeah, you found it, good man, games librarian. Yep. No, oh, Games Librarian can find anything. He's always yes, dropping links. Yeah. Everything. Yep. I, I, I love the guy for it. <laughs> uh, oh, and uh, props to, I think it was you, Danger Man, yesterday who uh, shared with me, well, shared with us, uh, the uh, Frank Drevin Resident Evil 4. <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely and, uh, genius. 
that made my day today. I, I finally watched it this morning, and yeah, that made my day. <laughs> it's, it's when he turns to Ada and goes, and by the way, I faked all my orgasms. <laughs> all I can think of is, I want this mod. I want yeah. this as an actual mod. Yeah. <laughs> It's when it's when he's when he's driving. It's you've got the siren, haven't you? And it's just yep. exactly the same, except it's it's in Resident Evil Four. Oh God, that I'd be in tears. If if that was an actual <laughs> mod, uh, whenever I let's play that game, that's how I would be doing it too. It'd be Frank Drebin. <laughs> <clears throat> oh God, Frank Drebin's amazing. Again, it, that was another connection with me and my old man. It was it was the Naked Gun. It was Monty Python, but predominantly oh, Naked God, yeah. Gun. We'd we'd always always be quoting. You ask anyone in my family if you you know you don't know them, but ask ask them. They, they, they'd always tell you, oh, we were always quoting the Naked Gun, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's like I can't see anything, Ed. Uh, you, use your open eye, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It's the same with like Black Adder. Yeah. One. Yeah, absolutely, Black Adder. absolutely classic. It's brilliant. Uh, How did the Adder, first Love War start? It's because a man shot an ostrich because he was hungry. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Baldrick. laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, it's, it's, did you ever it's... See that Millennium Special they made. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I did with the time machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Baldrick's underwear killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! And uh, yeah, the British, British, seriously. Yeah. I, again, Reva, you, I know you, you're not familiar with uh, uh, some of it, you know. Um, yeah. But we are, we are particularly. There, there's a real love and a sense of pride when it comes to a lot of British comedies. There's a lot of self-deprecation. We're able to laugh at ourselves. Yeah, yeah, we we are we are very dry and sarcastic with it as well. Exactly. well that's not something we have now. People that can laugh at themselves doesn't seem like that exists anymore. Everyone takes yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you you can't. What can you laugh at if you can't at least laugh at yourself? Well, you know, yeah. everybody everybody is self-deprecating these days, but in, to a depressive degree, rather yeah. than. You know, I, I, I consider myself someone, and I say this a lot, and, and people sort of think I'm being self-deprecating in a negative, you know, in a, in a depressing way. But, uh, you know, every now and then, and I'm sure Zell can say the same about him because he has, I'm a bit of a cunt. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm a bit of an asshole at times. Um, and, and it's I know not I so. Am. Exactly, and you are you, when you're able to say, "Yeah, I've been a bit of a dick at times." You, you, there's some, there's a bit of pride there, because and there's a bit of self-realization. Right now, She'll sorry, confirm. I'll go wake up the wife right now. She'll confirm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mine, mine will do exactly the same. Exactly. You know, I, I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't. Sometimes when I'm out in public, my dry humor gets me into trouble. <laughs> which will take them seriously. Yeah. No. My chatting inappropriate with... humor gets me into trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will not share about... that story on stream, though. <laughs> was... I'll give you an example. I was chatting to somebody about Skyrim, uh, uh, like a, a toddler group with my youngest. And <laughs> he's, oh, I really like really Skyrim. I just didn't like the racism in it. And straight as anything, I just said, really? I thought that was the best part. <laughs> and he took me seriously. I was like, it's a joke. It's okay. Like, you know, you've got to be able to have a bit of a laugh. And dry humour is a very British thing. The very dry, straight-laced humour. Well, on, well, on a on a uh, on a very basic level, and I say this to uh, I say this to some kids. I say this to people who um, are asking my advice and everything. I have you, you you ever noticed when you get into a, a swirling pit of depression? Uh, and it, it, you know it happen it happens to everybody at some point you, you you have these negative feelings and they seem to just snowball and compound all the time uh, and, and and you get you go on this downward spiral and it could just be for a day you get on this downward spiral and you 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 your face drops and you feel so low what's the one thing that brings you out of it 
a fucking smile, a laugh. If someone tells right. a joke and you think, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling much better now. And that's what comedy does. And that's what's yeah. starting to become missing from the world because people yeah. take themselves far too seriously. And people are all acting all offended and, 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 and just so butthurt over everything that they fail to laugh. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I personally, um, I, I'm, a, I, I'm in love with, with that sort of humour. I love Blazing Saddles. It's a fantastic <laughs> yeah, <that> film. <laughs> it's a fantastic film. It's hilarious. It's funny. And the fact that it's the, it, it, the, the film is ironic to a fucking astronomical degree. But people take everything so seriously. And it was the same with The Life of Brian when that came out. You know... The church that was saying, awesome. yeah, they, 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 the church was saying you're attacking in the church. He said, we're not attacking the church. And well, you, were, you were taking the piss out of Jesus. We oh, weren't wow. taking the piss out of Jesus. We were taking the piss out of the, the, the Sermon on the Mount by simply saying, we're having some guys in the back saying, oi, big nose, we can't hear you. Can't hear what he was saying because he was too far away. That's... <laughs> The Greeks shall inherit the earth. <laughs> About time they got some nice. Yeah. <laughs> Blessed are the cheese makers. <laughs> and and how prophetic was the Loretta scene? Oh, the Loretta scene, the thing I, that got me banned off Twitter. Yeah, I, um, I I want to be a woman. What I want you to call you me Loretta. Do. I want to have babies. You want to have babies? Where's the fetus gonna gesture? Just stay in a box. <laughs> And I love the fact that John Cleese said he's not removing that scene from the stage performance. No, no. Why should he? Why the fuck should we censor anything? And I said this the other. Uh, I said this uh, probably last week now. But self censorship is 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 just fucking ridiculous. Why are you going to? What? Why do we need to remove the, these these? Um, these famous scenes on a whim, on on someone just being, you know, someone, some small minority being offended. Who the hell do they have the right to, to, to revise history and what, what came before? And this is what scares me the most about um, streaming um, services. They can alter anything. Yep. Well, they're You've got no... Con that. Yeah, exactly. Of course they have. And, 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 and we've got... This is why I love the physical media. They can't change it. But they can change anything on streaming and they can remove and edit it. And, and it's gone forever. Yep. And DVDs. DVDs are in charity shops for, for 20 pence. And people, generally speaking, just get rid of them nowadays. You can't even sell them. And they're getting rid of them and they're throwing them in landfill at a rate of fucking knots. Because it's so convenient to have it on streaming. But it's so easy to, to, to remove. I've still got VHS tapes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a series I've got on VHS from the 90s called Ultraviolet. Oh, it's basically Ultraviolet, like yeah. files but with vampires. Interesting. Yeah. And it, the reason I've got it on VHS is because I can't find a copy on DVD. No. And it was like Idris Elba's very first role or something he was in it and you had jack davenport who's famous for doing the pirates of the caribbean films yeah and what have you and it's a really cool series and it's gutting that they only ever did six episodes um <coughs> yeah and it's, it's fantastic sort of concept because they, they basically explain vampires in a scientific way and it's so cool they've got they've got guns which are loaded with wooden tipped bullets Nice. Oh, nice. They, they isolated the chemical in garlic that affects vampires and turn it into a smoke grenade. Oh, wow. But it's a really cool show that does some great stuff. And so it's only six episodes long. And I don't. Did anyone ever watch True Blood? I've not it, watched it, but I've heard of it. Well, the actor, who, <laughs> there's an actor in True Blood who plays one of the main characters who's a vampire. Well, he's in Ultraviolet, ironically, as a bloody vampire. No way. Wow. Yeah. 
And it's quite funny as well, because obviously he's doing a southern accent in True Blood. He's actually British. He's from yeah. Birmingham. <laughs> so when you watch Milk to Violet, he's using his Brummy accent. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's yes. quite cool. I really want to suck your blood. I'm from would, Birmingham. So would you like okay. me, would you like yeah. to expose your to neck fair, for me, darling? Fair, I don't I don't think Brummies exist anymore. I think they've gone extinct. But you know. <laughs> Time to I'm bring back sure. the Brummie. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, speaking of physical media, I've taken uh, most of my shows and movies and ripped them from DVDs to video files. So I can still have something close to the convenience of streaming, but it's still my physical copy of something. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, and you can do that. You you can take a, 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 a PC tower and turn it into a home server. Yeah. And, and store, store all your files that way. Um, and have access to them. You've got uh, great apps like Plex that do that, um, that can connect to, to, your, to your home library. And they can't uh -huh. be changed. Uh, I found a DVD collection for Ultra Violet Zell. I've put link in the uh, Discord. <laughs> oh, there yeah. you go. There There's you go. Ten left. He's finding stuff again. <laughs> He's spending his money for him. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's normally my I'm... wife's job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I bet your wife appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> I believe I believe when uh, when the Resident Evil 2 remake was announced and they announced the collector's edition, I said, uh, you know, they've announced the collector's edition for Resident Evil 2 remake, and the only words out of my wife's mouth was, oh god, <laughs> because I I I got it, I fought for it as well. It took me five weeks to secure that. Because I was constantly going on to the website, um, the only website, the only place in the UK. I, I think in the US it's GameStop or something like that, or uh, right. so the equivalent. But uh, over here it's called Game, just Game. And um, yeah, they do they do all the special editions and all of that stuff, the steel tins and the yeah. big collectors boxes oh, and oh, whatnot. Although oh, Game and GameStop are dying. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They, of course they are, because they, they they can't compete. They they can't compete with places like Amazon anymore. You go into game, and and most of the games in there that were PS4 brand new were fifty four pounds. Yeah. It's so, like the one game we've got in town. You go in, and uh, most of the stuff are like board games and puzzles. Yeah. That's because uh, people are starting to buy digitally more and more rather than physical. Plus, yeah. also got, uh, Game Pass and whatever the PlayStation equivalent is. Mm. But again, well, isn't... Christ, my, my new laptop hasn't even got a CD-ROM drive. No, no, they don't come no. with them. No, oh. no. I mean, most I was laptop... devastated when the floppy disk drive went. I was devastated, but <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why I still keep my old Windows Seven computer around so that I can back up DVDs and stuff because it's all I got. Yeah, yeah. I've got an. Uh, I've still got an XP laptop. Nice. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God, XP, dear God. Yeah. <laughs> well, it it had com it had the best compatibility mode of any Windows operating system since, so you can play all your old PC games on there. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I, I've, I've been a fan of Windows 98, and I never let it go. Oh, I love 98. 98. 98 was the best. So good. Yeah. I remember a friend of mine. Uh, this was way back when in the in the mid 90s. Um, the, his parents entered it like a just you know a Reader's Digest competition or something like that. It was just something daft, and they won a Windows 98 computer a compact and it was an all-in-one like those old vcr tvs you used to get um it was an all-in-one and it was the most amazing thing i'd ever seen because i was still operating in on a tandy desktop with a three with a with a fucking uh floppy drive this drive playing uh like this really fucking obscure tomb raider side scroller three pixel jobby and, and he, yeah, he had the he had Windows ninety eight 
and it was just the most amazing thing I'd ever seen, Windows 98. And I fell in love with it because it was so um, it was so customizable. You could customize you could customize any window with a background. You could customize any window with a sound. You could go through all your sounds and change them all. And I absolutely love that. Oh, I, I, I had a Star Trek theme on mine. It mm. had the sound effects when you press certain icons and what yep. have you. And it was so yes. cool. And the I remember because the, the early virus protection thing came with a red alert signal. <laughs> it was so cool. Nice. Those were the days when you had to be told by the computer when it was safe to turn off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In my loft, I've got a load of floppy disks up in the loft, mm -hmm. and in there is actually the floppy disk version of uh, Doom. No way. Yeah, wow. that's up in my loft currently, with a load of other games on floppy disk, like Space Hulk for the Commodore 64. <laughs> was it Commodore 64? No, it was definitely a Commodore, Commodore Amiga, sorry. Not mm. Commodore 64. <laughs> Commodore Amiga. I, uh, I used to have the old Atari 520 home computer. Uh, I have the ZX Spectrum 48K. Yeah. It was a pass down from my uh, older siblings. I've got yeah. a Spectrum ZX upstairs. And, uh, they, we had an Aircon Electron that we all had to share. Yay. First family console for us was uh, was the Mega Drive. <clears throat> I remember my, my siblings bringing the Mega Drive home. I've still got it. Still got my Mega Drive. Mm. I've still currently plugged into my TV as my Dreamcast. The most you have a Dreamcast. Cool. You have yeah. a Dreamcast. Um, oh. And I've got an N64 age. as well. N64 <laughs> with GoldenEye. So yes, Danger Man. <laughs> that will be on the agenda at some point. You're fucking damn right it will be, mate. Yeah. I wasn't too uh, far from you on Monday, actually. Really? I was in Nottingham. That isn't far at all, mate. No, that's down the road. It Compared yeah, to where you live. Nottingham. I was in Nottingham for a concert, so and I was staying oh. overnight. I thought about messaging you, but I thought, nah, nah, he'll be busy. <laughs> <laughs> Just pop over for tea and biscuits. And golden eye. That's and golden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's definitely yeah, it is definitely on the agenda. That's got to be. Um, tell the missus about it. And she says, she says, I've told. What have I told you about meeting strange people on the internet? <laughs> this is oh. a weirdo. Norfolk, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just go around his house. You'll never see me again. Don't worry about it. I'll be in yeah. pieces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I said he's got to be harmless because his wife warned him not to get me demonetized. So. <laughs> I don't know if I've failed already or what. I don't know. Mate, I don't think you failed. I think I failed because I <laughs> swore before you did. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, I've been pretty tame. There's a few moments where I've wanted to make a comment. I'm like, no, don't do it. You'll start a riot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, anyone in, in this in this stream would mind a, a riot at this point, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. you know. As long as it's a quiet riot. What, mostly okay. peaceful? It was mostly peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mostly well, we peaceful. Just, like, we just smash stuff, but we do it really quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Like one of those uh, those deaf discos you can go to, you know. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, what? You're not seeing those. No. It's basically, yeah, it's a disco, but everyone's wearing headphones. So, yeah. Have you not seen those? <laughs> They're hilarious. I, I have not. No. No, no. Literally, it's a disco, but everyone's wearing headphones instead of having oh the music blaring out. So oh my god! If you're on the outside looking in, you're just seeing a bunch of people having spasms on the dance floor. <laughs> people on the It'd be like um, someone did a clip of uh, Greece without the music, and that's yeah. I, that's what I imagine that would be. Just yeah, quiet, yeah, to, just a lot of huffing, panting, and <laughs> it's honestly the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh my god. That sounds it's amazing. Fantastic. That just, sounds just, superb. Just just seizures on the dance floor. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> seizures on the dance floor. No wonder aliens don't come and visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. Hard. Well, 
you you imagine an outdoor sign and um you know an outdoor gig like that like glastonbury and it would just literally be the sound of of people shuffling their feet yeah <laughs> but like a herd it would sound like a herd of elephants shuffling their feet <laughs> especially depending on how fat the people are that are doing it well i was gonna say that's next i mean you know yeah gravitationally speaking <laughs> <laughs> that's an awful lot of friction <laughs> well i mean i think japan will be on standby oh know. fucking hell i need a piss i can't deal with this <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh. this isn't the effect i normally have on people but you know it's fine <laughs> it's all good it's not our stream exactly it's not our stream <laughs> like, it's not our problem yeah hey he's the one that opened up the discord server and invited us yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. his first mistake. Yep. <laughs> oh dear. So 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 when we when he comes back we've got to discuss our final solution. That's what we've got to discuss. Yeah. So the Star Trek issue, nothing else. Right, right. Of yeah. course, of course. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> nothing else. We're not gonna you know, name anything. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. You you guys were talking. Well, we were all talking earlier about um, like in the past, whenever you know you had to kind of hide being a Star Trek fan, and then coming across fellow Star Trek fans. I had one of those experiences uh, with a friend of mine's girlfriend at the time, where um, I mentioned a show that I liked, and she's like, "Oh, what show was it?" And I mentioned uh, Stargate. I just kind of thought, "Oh, she's not going to know what this is," and she knew right away what it was, and we like instantly like bonded over Stargate and started quoting it, and that was fun. Like oh we, god, yeah. We started doing scenes, like not a ton of scenes, but like a couple different scenes where we just uh pick a character and just start like re uh quoting each line from a scene. That was a lot of fun. I, I just got really dodgy looks from women that looked at me like I was some sort of like offender. If I mentioned I was a Star <laughs> Trek fan, and then they'd just like run away. <laughs> I, I got that too before. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is clearly not a woman of culture. So it's, yeah. it's when you turn around and say, oh, "I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Star Trek fan," and they turn around to you and go, "Oh, that's that's fine. Some of some of my good friends are Star Trek fans." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, really? And that, it's that look of disappointment where they go, "Oh, really?" <laughs> I, I, the thing is, it, it, it's a similar sort of thing to when uh, you used to frequent nightclubs. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fairly straight talker. All right, so you know this sort of peer pressure you have from women in nightclubs, where they say, "Hey, you want to dance?" I say, "No, I don't want to dance." Why not? Because I can't. <laughs> It's that simple. I can't dance. So don't try and make me dance because I'm not going to. Yeah. Similarly, <laughs> they, they, they think of that as a rejection the same way we think of, uh, of, of, you know, being rejected because we've mentioned the word Star Trek. They're just being straight talkers. <laughs> Interesting, Fuck's because, sake. yeah, I can completely relate to that, relate to that. But because, yeah, I'm not dancing either because I can't. No, I don't dance. I, I don't dance. know. But I, I had it with one girl and she was practically throwing herself at me. I don't know. I can't imagine why she must have been pissed out of her face. But <laughs> regardless of that, she says, she says, do you want to dance? And I said, no. She said, why not? Because I don't dance. And she took it as a rejection, a, a, a sexual rejection as well. So that's got no re that's that they're separate things i'm not gonna yeah. I, are you are you trying to attribute my ability to dance and keep rhythm and timing to my ability to keep rhythm and timing in other areas <laughs> but they do they have that odd correlation don't they yeah yeah i think they do but yeah. funnily enough star trek has no correlation with sex otherwise we'd all be getting laid 
Yeah. Well, they, huh. they tried with that DS9 episode on uh, Ryza, and that did not work at all. Ah, seeking Jamal on. This is why I became yeah. a musician, you see. To balance out the Three Star Trek fandom? Exactly. There you go. And I was good at sport as well, which kind of came in handy. Jesus, nice. you, you are a rare breed. I am rare. I'm very rare. And I'm going to stop my wife from ever going to spec savers, but that's beyond the point. I don't. I. I. I apparently, I brainwashed mine, so I'm fine. That's. It's. It's good. It's good. You know. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> I. I don't know how I got mine. I mean, I'll take it. You know. Yeah. All, yeah, all get... I'll say is, you know, marrying a nurse. You know, the uniform is not what Penthouse Forum made it out to be. No, no, I can imagine it's not. Shame. <laughs> the the NHS has a lot to learn. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're very unflattering, aren't they? Mm. Not in nurses. Oh, no, actually, yeah. I, I can imagine. I can imagine they uh, they don't um, they don't come back clean very often. There's no vinyl, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. uh, someone says uh, my first trek was Red Dwarf. Yeah. Good, good start. Yeah, I Red think. Red Dwarf is awesome. Red Dwarf is is just oh, so funny. Uh, it's funny, you know, bring us back to New Trek. It's like mm -hmm. I can understand like Rimmer when he had that virus and the penguin hand puppet now. Cause oh, Trek, Mr. Flibble. Like, Mr. Mr. Flibble doesn't like this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is it? We can't do that. <laughs> Who'd clean up the mess? <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's the king of the potato people. <laughs> yeah. I begged him. <laughs> I wept. <laughs> it's, when, it's when he goes... <gasps> I mean, tears, that did. I mean, absolute tears. Oh, dear Lord. But I think, again, just a great show. Uh, and and the... the I think the highlight of Red Dwarf for me personally is Ace Rimmer. Oh, yes. Ace Rimmer. Give me a kipper, I'll be back for breakfast. <laughs> it's really dirty when he says, Princess Bonjour, this is Ace Rimmer. There'll be time for explanations later, and hopefully some sex. Yep. <laughs> Freaking awesome. Yeah, my, my favourite Dwarf episode is Gunman of the Apocalypse. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so a great very. Episode. <laughs> Very popular one, love it. The ep that's the episode they were told not to make because they didn't have the budget for it, but they made it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, they and built a town, the didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. It's a good one. I, I liked. Uh, I, I liked the VR machine. Yeah. And the you fact that he's. he's yeah, he's got a knock. <laughs> He's you see history there like this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. shit! I I loved I loved the one in season seven. The, the I think it was the um, the Ace Rimmer one in season seven with the AR machine there because they actually sit down and and he's actually got no fucking pants on <laughs> and he's got the codpiece just over his tackle <laughs> because he's trying to. Um, Trying to shag the 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 queen, isn't he? The queen. Yeah. yeah. And he's using yeah. the cheat codes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just. What what do you claim is your prize? It's a night and a day in the bed of your good lady. <laughs> 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 oh. And he kind of sticks his head out of the tank and says, "Has anybody got any whipped cream?" <laughs> And then all I can think about is Riker in that one episode saying, if anyone needs me, I'll be in holodeck too. <laughs> yeah, but, you just but... know what's going to happen. <laughs> Someone's going to be shoveling. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I feel sorry uh, for the cleanup crew hey, in that holodeck. Oh. Hey, remember, the ship is self-cleaning. <laughs> I, I don't really... think there's enough to clean that stain. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> just with alphabetic spaghetti. Some, 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 some poor bloody school 
kid is going into the holodeck for a school project and ends up slipping over because <laughs> Riker's just turned the program off. I can feel it wriggling. Oh! <laughs> That's a <V> Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. No, that's just wrong. <laughs> it was bad enough when I went into the last holodeck that Geordie went into. Oh! <laughs> it was filled with sadness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just jizz and shame. <laughs> jizz and shame. What does Bagley do in them holodecks? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he's, he's actually quite tame. He just falls asleep. In, on on yeah. uh, Musketeer World's Beverly's lap. That episode is so good, especially when you got Deanna Troy sort of defending Barkley, and then she sees the holographic version of herself, <laughs> and Riker is yeah. loving it. Riker's got this beautiful <laughs> smug thing. Yeah. Like, Delay that order. We've got to help this man. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's Space so good. Star is a legend. Oh. <laughs> The legend right, that is Riker. That man, that man can detect a hole anywhere, can he? Like, <laughs> yeah. Even, even, even a race that has no goddamn gender still managed to do it. He still managed. You know, the, 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 Jesus Christ! Can you uh, just imagine? <laughs> can you just imagine a fuck off between uh, Riker and Kirk to see who how, who could bang the most? Oh my that's, God! That's, that's the plot of these uh, Millennium Vulcan episodes lately. <laughs> the it, hunting down Kirk and Riker because they're shagging the way across the galaxy. That, that's, what created, that's what created the anomaly in the Devron system. <laughs> <laughs> Some space ruptures, no. No, no, no. <laughs> they want the warp field effect. <laughs> they F they F their way through the galaxy so much it created a whole new hole. <laughs> like, and I bet you one wanted to put their member in it too. Oh god! Oh my god! Yeah, that 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 guy's got some fucking serious problems. A lot, a <laughs> lot of itchy of... readiness. <laughs> they sort of swept that under the table, aren't they, with the uh, accumulative warp effects? You don't hear it much after that episode. You like it might hear like one episode here, one episode there, say something about it. Mm. Like that time Kim got transported to the alternate reality where he made that run about to counteract the effects or something. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, the Yellowstone uh, run about. Yeah. yeah the, the, the tend to seem to forget about it. Oh, uh, yes, that's just got I walk. Yeah. No consequences here. Well, that's usually what happens with environmentalism. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's forgotten about pretty quick. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Well, uh, a little thing like an intergalactic war or two will do that to you. It's it's fine. It's fine. Best Greta. <laughs> Red alert. Shields up. They're getting told off by yeah. corporate entity shields. <laughs> it's just looking, just sitting there in the United Federation of Planets Council going, how dare you? How dare you travel at warp? You're not thinking about the children. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. Oh, excuse me, I'm off to Vulcan. I walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a seminar on Vulcan in a few hours. I must travel at high warp. Maximum warp. <laughs> yeah. Corporate shield. Oh, dear. Love it. Porn and puppet. There you go. Yeah, buzzkill. <laughs> <laughs> we are quite happy wrecking this damn planet because if we don't kill it first it'll kill us oh. oh my word love it absolutely love it well gentlemen I think I'm going to read a few comments out from the uh, from the chat how many we... of them are hate <laughs> um, no mate they're all coming from a place of love um, I'm sure I uh, basically uh, we've not read any obviously because we we're having a nice conversation about just stuff that will get us cancelled um, 
<laughs> so uh, let's see. Let's see if we can pull some up here. There's not. There's not many. We're not that popular, to be fair. Give it time. Before yes, mate. Well, well, this is why I say I think I think this should be a regular Friday sort of thing if everyone's okay. Uh, I, I think and, this would be a good thing for a Friday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and before, and we can get. Horsemen. Yeah. I mean, get get a few more people in as well. Get get some. Uh, yeah. You know, I'll I'll see if we can get Clayton in. And if there's anybody in the chat who uh, who who wants to sort of uh, join in at any point, then go on to Discord and uh, join the conversation. And hopefully, we can uh, get some things moving. Um. Uh, so we have Stepan who said, uh, I never, I never know if I'm butchering people's names, but that's literally what it says, Stepan. Um, you already had a show. What she wanted to make her was her show. I assume she's talking about um, fucking Kurtzman's body. Mm. Uh, just wait for Starfleet Academy to see cadets teaching, teaching instructor on how. The universe works. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be what it is. Um, the Starfleet Academy series. There was something that I read on that, and I, I don't know where it. I don't. I can't. I don't know where the article was. It was just something I, I happened to see. Um, but it was the way that they described it. It was essentially. We spoke about this last night. It was essentially Dawson's Creek in space. Yeah. Oh, because it's going God. to be it's going to be teen all about the 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 the, the love the relationships <laughs> between the cadets, um, and that's going to be the focus. It was. Mr. It, Flibble doesn't like this. <laughs> Mr. No. Flibble is now angry. Let me. It was on that fucking. What was it? It's um, on the Discord. I think you posted it on the Discord, didn't you? Did, I might have. I don't know whether I posted the link. Um, oh, I don't know. Let me ha let me let me have a quick look because it's it's an absolute fucking scream of a read. Uh, did I post it on? It was the Rachel Garrett thing you you posted that cell? Yeah, it's a section oh, thirty. That's another thing they got boner for, isn't it? Section thirty-one. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. They don't even understand it. The, they're the so part. secret that everyone knows about them, and they have com badges. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They're that secret. Uh. I need to put in Stuffy Academy, maybe. But yeah, you're right. That was a great description of it. Dawson's Creek in space. Oh God, this is where they're going. It's where they're going with it. Um, yeah, post. I think part of it said something about uh, threats to the academy and the federation because I remember we, us talking about it last night and how it's like, well, if it's a threat to the federation, then yes, it's going to be a threat to the academy as well. That's Unpaid right. Yeah. Student loans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That that's that's right. It was. Um, it was a, a big threat to Starfleet Academy and then the Federation. It was like, well, they're both the part of this, they're both the same fucking institution, you knobs. Yep. They're both exactly the same fucking thing. And it's focusing on the interpersonal relationships of the cadets. Uh, and love oh, love yeah. triangles, love stories. Of course. Um, how and... do we get Star Trek Sex in the City? Tell us <laughs> that one. It's I, coming, probably. I think with their... Poitus Synchronos. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking on Ferengular. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Banging on Praxis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bajoran Bangers. Bajoran <laughs> <laughs> Bukaki. Oh, no. Lower uh, the tone. <laughs> your power <laughs> is strong. Oh, I say getting Randy on Romulus, and then I remember what they did to Romulus. No. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but 
They couldn't seek the frustration does. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. <laughs> it was enveloped by it. it just, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Blue balls and planets. <laughs> what happened to all the Romulan ships? Like they had their own bloody fleet and everything. Yeah. They they vanished due to a subspace plot device. Ah. <laughs> well, the... <laughs> no, they fell, well, into, they fell into a plot hole. <laughs> yeah. No, no. What it was was um, when Romulus was destroyed. Um, this uh, this weird effect occurred on, in, in in the far reaches of you know, the the corner of the quadrant where in this nebula there was this this, this planet and a, there was this Kelpian that was alone and decided and just had a hissy fit and screamed and all the yeah. Romulan cloaking devices activated and they can't switch them off. So they're there, they're just hidden. Oh, the Kelpian okay. watched season one of Discovery. Yeah. <laughs> that was the result. If they can't switch them <laughs> Cloaking devices off. They still know where the ships are. Or they have crews on board. Well, they they, they do, the but they they can't see each other. <laughs> but they cloak the crew. <laughs> well, yeah, but you, they they cloak the ship, but you don't you don't see crew flying through space. Just just. <laughs> Imagine if the if the cloaking device just half worked. It, it cloaked the ship, but the crew had just stood there flying through space like cardboard cutouts. <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be amazing. It'd be fucking brilliant, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the 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 you know the um, Romulans are sitting there in wait and 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 the defiant rocks up to them and Cisco is going, the fuck are they playing at? Because <laughs> you just see a bunch of Romulans walking around in space. <laughs> They're just not aware. <laughs> Oh, my word. Oh. Um, someone was asking for Picard impressions. I, I think I've covered that. I didn't even see that comment, to be fair. Um, the Orville season one was way better than any new Trek that I have seen, to be honest. Um, loud as a whisper was a fan submission. Uh, the deaf actor who guest stars wrote it. Mm. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know mm. that. I love I love this community because you learn something new every day. Enterprise got a lot of flack at the time, but it's better than most of New Trek. Um, there, aren't, there aren't that many comments, to be fair. But if we make it a regular thing, it, it builds momentum. Oh, um, God, yeah. <laughs> or at least a hate mob. We'll see what we'll get first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, any attention is good attention for the algorithm. Yeah. I, I guess you're right. Head head no such thing as bad press. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, and boy, did I get some shit. The Kotaku article on us. That'll be the one we know we made it big. Oh, <laughs> mate, that'll be fantastic. <laughs> guys on the internet say bad things about Star Trek. Hit yeah. them, everyone. Hit them. <laughs> They hurt my fifis. They're bad people. They, 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 they mock us. They turned me into a newt. <laughs> I got better. <laughs> and the worst part is, like, they would say something like that, and it's like, but actually, we love Star Trek, and they we... can't understand that. No, they well, don't. Thing, everything we're saying is coming from a place of love because we want yeah. Star Trek to be successful. Yeah. yeah. We want to recapture some of that magic that we had as a kid. You know, it's yeah. But not only that, we want to pass that magic on to our exactly. kids. Exactly. Oh yeah, I... remember when you could watch uh, Star Trek with your kids? You can't do that. Oh now. god, yeah. Like, no. I think all of I, Azel, I know you mentioned it. I think Danger Man, I think you mentioned it too. Like, I mean, I, I same way. Like, as a family, we watched the original series. My dad bought the VHS tapes. Yeah. And um, that's how I first got into Star Trek, and I made it up. Uh, to him probably about like 20 years later when I got him into Deep Space Nine and we would sit down together every so often and just go through my DVDs of the series. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I'd love to sit down with my son and watch modern Star Trek, but I don't want to have to explain the torture scene with Icheb. I don't want to have to explain self-deletion in season two of Picard. Like, 
I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to, ex- yeah, I don't want to have to explain the severed baby heads in, in, in Discovery. Yes, and what on earth is that Klingon woman doing to that man? Is he, mm-hmm. is he hurting him? Yes and no. Well, in, in, <laughs> even even then, in season one of Discovery, the, the, obviously there were a lot of warning signs anyway, but the graphic content was in there because that, that, uh, that Klingon, the Ash fella, whatever his fucking name was. Yeah. He got quite sev- the surgery was brutal to surgically alter him to become a human. Especially it... when you consider that Klingons apparently have two wee wees. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they had to lock one of them off. You oh, thought that Warp would have had something to poor, say about that at some poor, point. Poor Jadzia. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, subsequently, that's why she liked what it. the blood pouch is for? Oh. Oh, uh, oh! <laughs> they're they're, they're, oh, they're God, space I'll, kangaroos. I'm really going to take that further, but I'm not going to do that on your stream. Like <laughs> <laughs> the entrance to Hogwarts, the mystical mm-hmm. fourth hole. Oh! <laughs> you just have to believe that it's there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <clears throat> do you reckon? Do you reckon that? that what do you reckon? That par- is perpendicular to one another? Is it sort of yeah. that or? These are questions uh, made for greater men than us. Side by right. side, of that, that, that <laughs> don't know. Because if it's that, it's somewhat convenient. <laughs> if it, if it's that, then, you know, it, suddenly Jadzia gets renamed to Bear with Wide Canyon. All I want to know is if Wolf got an awkward boner while on duty, how would he walk? One down each leg. <laughs> yeah. Would it be a bit like John Wayne kind of walk? He's <laughs> just accounting for it. But I, I, I guarantee you, Raffi, <laughs> it, Raffi would come along and have a go at war for, for sitting with his legs open. <laughs> Klingon spreading. <laughs> yeah. Klingon spreading. So it's twice as bad as humans. <clears throat> Jesus. Does that oh. mean he's got far balls? <laughs> Oh god, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't even thought of that. I assume so, yeah, yeah. Or, or they're just two massive like bongo drums. Oh Dang god. Do you, do you do you remember Bashir? Was it Bashir or no? It was Crusher when when um, I think it was when Wolf got injured and she says Klingon bodies are full of redundancies. Do you reckon the second one's a spare? Oh god. <laughs> It's all like, you know, if it's say one gets hacked off in battle, at firstly, ouch, um, secondly, right. uh, cauterize, and thirdly, don't worry, I've got a spare. Yeah. <laughs> got a backup. And still have all the children I want. Well, yeah. And if not, you know, Judzi has got a choice. You can have one, the other, or both at the same time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, not, it's not just that, but, but I, I also heard that they're, they're quite serrated. Which is which is just even worse, okay? But stay with me on this one. Um, you 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 put together, no pun intended, two, yeah, two. That's 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 right. ouchie number one. Ouchie number two is too mm-hmm. serrated, yeah. That's ouchie number two. Ouchie number three is is Klingon Klingons are quite violent when they do it. Yeah. And that. and and Chadzi is quite frail. Cockfighting must be great on Kronos. <laughs> <laughs> I stab you with my flesh knife. <laughs> uh, it's time for a sword fight. <laughs> Kalos Kale. of the unforgettable defeated countless enemies with just his flesh knives. <laughs> I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. <laughs> uh, can you match my prowess with a battleth? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Gowron, we salute you. Show wing. <laughs> Show you would think wing. would not want Jazia after being subjected, after she was subjected to all that. Bloody yeah, he'd, yeah, be to, with, he'd be able to climb into it. <gasps> Trill internals work. They might be okay. <laughs> they might be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's got that scene in Groundhog Day where he goes off the, the off the cliff. He might be okay, and then it blows up. <laughs> so Chatsy might be okay. 
Yeah, like, you know, things are bleeding and everything <laughs> after ever, all that. But, yeah, she might be all right. Uh, Bashir would know. He'd have to patch her up. Yep. Yeah, she That's would. a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jazir, why are you walking for it? Don't ask. <laughs> and don't date a Klingon. <laughs> God, I be... I should have gone with Bashir. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, had to, I had to suck for Bashir because uh, the episode where Worf and uh, Dax got together was the same one where Quark and that Klingon chick got together. And he kind of makes a joke about patching them up after figuring out what they're doing. Yeah. And, it's like, God, that... Yeah. Yep. He had to patch up the girl he likes after she got banged by somebody else. That's 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 beyond friend zone. That's doctor yeah. zone, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it, and, they, and they lost Lita to Ron. <laughs> I know! Oh, I know, I... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I he's love still it when... doing better than Jordy because at least he got some of these women, but it's true. Yeah, true. I, I, like, I, like, I like to pretend that Jordy did eventually get Leah Brahms. Kind of deserved well, that one. Well, he did. Yeah. He, he did in the alternate future, didn't he? Well, in all good things, and in all I good think things. That, I think this kind of hinted at in Picard season three because the kids' names are the same. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it'd be nice. It, it, it'd be nice, but it's like um, she, she she was married, so things will have to go have gone south for her to get with Geordie. Yeah. Oh, the uh, arrangers, a nice little engineering accident for him. <laughs> <laughs> he greased the the the, the warp engines so they uh, so they didn't stop. <laughs> he pulled out the emergency brake isolinear chip, and he just went cask carousing into a into a star. <laughs> so oh, I can't, I can't just in a car with no brakes. <laughs> He's mine finally. Yeah. No more trips to the holiday. Oh God! It's but, a shame you, what happened to your husband. I don't know what could have happened. I inspected the ship myself. It was fine. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll take care of you. <laughs> it's oh. what he would have wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... Yeah, he... Go on. He sent me this dying transmission. It's holographed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take care of her for me. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest let's be honest fellas because we're all we're, we're, we're all fellas and to be fair it, it, it counts to the women as don't well don't presume my gender <clears throat> how dare you <laughs> does this face look fucking bothered <laughs> <laughs> anyway we're all uh, we're, we're all human beings fuck you <laughs> to my species <laughs> You see, this is this is the endless the the endless walk off the cliff that we just can't avoid, because it doesn't matter whatever I say. There's always someone who's going to have a counter argument. Yep. But there's it let's, doesn't let's, have to make sense. No, exactly, exactly. It can just be I'm offended. Um, yeah, let's all be honest. Can't argue with an idiot. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I I, I don't um, I don't like people arguing with me. Like, you're right, absolutely right. Um, <laughs> No, but let's all be honest. If if holodecks were real, I think it could mean the end of the human race. You and I have already discussed my obsession with Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. So yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm looking yeah. forward. I'm looking forward to your let's play, uh, especially with that scene I, I sent you earlier. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've I've been in love with Esri Dax since I was like 12 years old. So. Yeah, same here. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you know, it's we were we were looking up uh, yesterday, weren't we? That her age, she's fifty-two, and she looks incredible. Incredible! Yep. I could not believe it. I thought she was our age, but she's not. She's fifty-two, and she looks absolutely stunning. And I, 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 I it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a wild guess here, but I, I'm guessing she hasn't had any work done. 
I don't think she's she had not had any work done. I think she's just naturally that stunning. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. Like... But but you know, it's um, it's just a fantasy. <laughs> <coughs> we all have them. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm saying, I'm like I said, if you had a holiday, you can create anyone. Yep. Yep. The human race would come to an end. Oh yeah. We should be just, yeah. you know. Yes, yeah, so you wouldn't have to try. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No. You wouldn't. You, Give it you... time. Japan's already got some really advanced-looking dolls. <laughs> oh so God, I time. know. Nice. I, I can't think of anything creepier. To be fair. I can. <laughs> Somebody ordered a Greta Thunberg one. Oh no. <laughs> oh. We don't know who. But somebody did. We know that much. Does it that... hurt you and say how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You start taking all. You start taking removing items of clothing. How dare you? It only uses natural products like cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you cock! You got me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no shit! Plastic, please. <laughs> no synthetics. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, oh. if you really, really think about it, plastics are made out of hydrocarbons, which is oil. So it's all natural anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fair point. Very that's fair a point. Fair point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to live with that in the back of my mind now. <laughs> Oh, well, um, yeah, I, I I think we can pretty much call that nearly three hours, guys. Three hours? Oh, my God. It's one, nearly one there. o'clock in the morning here. I know. I'm in the same time zone as you. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's nuts. I'm just shocked that it, we've gone on for three hours and rambled. It's amazing. But, <laughs> but the amazing thing is, mate, is that we, we, we do this on Discord chat weekly now anyway. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. So, um, so yeah, I think we should make this a regular stream. Let's make it. Let, let's let. I think we should migrate to Quarks though. It won't yeah, be. As, I don't think it will be as interesting a background because I've got the moving background, which I quite like actually. Um, but yeah, I think we should do a, a weekly thing of this. What do you think? I think that sounds like a damn good Agreed. idea. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. And I hope everybody who's been watching has enjoyed the conversation as well. Um, we, will, we will work around a format where uh, we get a little bit more participation from the chat and a bit more interaction with them. But it's very difficult to have with this sort of conversation and speak to chat as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, please um head on over to everybody's channels all the links are in the description it's hit the subscribe button uh check out cold harbor because uh they're an absolutely fantastic band um uh, and we, we we'd love uh like sal says supporting small creators is is the way forward it's absolutely brilliant um also check out clayton's book holocene it's a fantastic read um and like i say head over to zoe you do you have a channel no 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 uh but you do reva and you do games librarian so head on over yeah. to their channels and hit the subscribe button that would really help them out um and just um just like the stream and uh share it if you want as long as it's still up by the morning <laughs> And uh, feel free to join the Discord as well. Absolutely. Please stop by the Discord. We'd love to get to know you, and hopefully uh, you can uh, you can actually come on as well, and it'll be fun to have you. Um, but let's let's get the community growing. Yes. And uh, I want to thank you, all of you three guys. Actually, it's been an absolute blast doing this, and I'm, I'm glad it's going to become a regular thing. Uh, thank you, Reva. Thank you, Zell. And thank you, Games Librarian. Thank it's you for having me. So, yeah, uh, yeah uh, it's over and out from us. Take care, everybody. 